Okay, so uh, now we're for sure this time. Donald Trump has actually said he will generously offer up his time and energy to serve as interim Speaker of the House to help unify the Republicans. Said he'll be the great unifier. That's what he's going to do. And I am just begging all of you, please, I implore you. I'm looking into the eyes of every Republican member of Congress right now. Do what you know must be done. Nominate second and vote for Donald Trump as Speaker of the House. Give the people what they want. Now, I got to be honest, I actually think there's a strong possibility it could happen right now. I mean, strong doesn't mean greater than majority, it doesn't mean 90%. But I'm also wondering, because nobody really wants to do it, there's a handful. I mean, Scalise wants to do it, Jim Jordan wants to do it. They'll probably go in that direction. But there is perhaps at least a single digit or double digit percentage chance that if Donald Trump gets the nomination, many Republicans will be concerned that if they don't support him, it could be bad for them, considering Donald Trump is polling so well right now. There's a huge opportunity to signal to your base and your district like, hey, look, man, I'm backing Donald Trump, too. I'm just like you guys. And I, I hope and I pray that's the case. So we'll talk about that. Plus, we've got a bunch of other news. Putin's threatening to nuke and wipe out the West. OK, I guess. Here we go again. And uh, then we have Elon Musk is being sued by the SEC. Before we get started with all that, my friends, head over to TimCast.com. And at this point, I'm only assuming that if you are buying tickets to our event tomorrow in Miami, October 6th, you're probably already in the area. But if you haven't, Matt Gates, Patrick Bet David, Luke Rudkowski, me, James, did I say James O'Keefe? Uh, Ian Crossland, we're going to be on stage. We've got a pre-show. We've got an after show. We've got Alex Stein. It is going to be amazing. We've got bags of free stuff for all of you who attend. And uh, I am, I, it, it is just, you know, we, we've planned this event for a long time now. It's been like a year in the making. And uh, we booked Matt Gates a while ago. But with all the work that he's done, you know, I've got people come on, coming up to me being like, wow, great timing. Like, you know, it's really awesome that you got Matt Gates." And I'm like, dude, we booked Matt Gates well before he was doing, you know, this fight in Congress. So we're really, really honored to have him. And of course, uh, originally Don Jr. was going to come. He couldn't make it. But James O'Keefe stepped up. Patrick Bet David will be there. This is going to be absolutely amazing. Tickets are going fast, but we do, we do have tickets available. And our elite members, there will be a meetup tomorrow. For all of you, we're at 3 p.m. It's going to be absolutely amazing. So head over to TimCast.com. If you're in the area or you know someone who is and you want to grab some tickets and bring them on down, it's going to be amazing. I'm really excited to hear uh, Matt Gates talk about the fight in Congress right now and the work that he's doing. But also, don't forget to click join us, become a member, so you can participate in our Discord community, which is it's basically an app you can download for those that aren't familiar. And it's a chat room multiple chat rooms. You hang out with people who are like-minded or sometimes not. Maybe you argue, but they're working on culture. They're making music. There's pre-shows, after shows, all within the Discord community. And as a member, you get access to our uncensored members only show, which will be up tonight at about 10 p.m. And once you're in the Discord server, you can submit questions, call in and talk to us. It's going to be a blast. So smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share this show with your friends. Joining us tonight, we've got a couple of guests. We've got Michael Seifert, How's it going, everybody? Michael Seifert, founder and CEO of Public Square, largest non-woke marketplace in the world. Over 70,000 businesses that don't hate you and love the country, and uh, they love the Constitution. I'm a huge fan of the Public Square app, as most of you, you know. And we, that's why we shout it out so much, because people keep saying, like, what can we do to win? And the boycotts have been tremendously successful in forcing companies to back off from wokeness. Now, I don't think Vanguard and BlackRock and all of them actually are getting away from it, but they're certainly saying it. Why? I don't know. When Bud Light th lost $30, mil uh, $30 billion, that matters a lot. So Public Square, you download it, you sign up, and you can see a map of all of these businesses in your area that share your values. Really, really great stuff. So I I'm obviously a huge fan. Thanks for joining. It's going to be a blast. We got Alex Brusowitz as well. So I'm glad to be back. Thanks for having me, Tim. And uh, I'm Alex Brusowitz. I'm a pro-Trump political consultant, work with m most of the the great people in the MAGA world that you're big fans of probably. And uh, I love coming on TimCast always. Right on, man. Thanks for thanks for hanging out. Of course, Lucas here. Hey, guys. My name is Zuckerdowski of YouTube.com forward slash We Are Change. And today I'm wearing a very perfect shirt for uh, parties or for incels, incels. It has three boxes. One of them says single. Another one of them says taken. The third one that is checked says resisting the blank blank corporatist <laughs> banking cabal with memes and thought crimes to see what is underneath this piece of tape and what this shirt really says. Go check out the best political shirts dot com. And I want to thank Public Square for doing what they're doing. I have my uh, supplement and health biz business up there on we are change dot shop. So I uh, thank you guys for doing everything you're doing. And this should be a great conversation. Thank you. Of course, Glad to be here. Right on. We got search pressing the buttons. 
Yo, yeah, I'm over here just trying to keep myself muted, so it sounds good. Of What's course, up? of course, also mentioned tomorrow's event is sponsored by Public Square. You guys have helped us put this event on, so I'm, I'm really grateful for that. But we're also very excited. We've got bags with products from Public Square companies to give out to everybody who comes. It's going to be awesome. Let's jump into the news, ladies and gentlemen. We got this one from the Daily Beast, and I chose the Daily Beast on purpose because we love how leftist they are. Donald Trump said he's open to being House Speaker for a short period. Oh, how generous. And this is what they wrote. They wrote, Donald Trump says he's generously offered up his services to be an interim Speaker of the House until GOP brass can sort out which Republican it wants in congressional leadership for the long term. Trump told Fox News that he's been approached by lawmakers and was queried about his interest in the position, which he's technically eligible to hold despite not being a member of Congress. I have been asked to speak as a unifier because I have so many friends in Congress, Trump said. If they don't get the vote, they have asked me if I would consider taking the speakership. The ex-president made clear that becoming House Speaker would not deter from his plans to retake the White House in next year's presidential election. Other names that have been floated uh, uh, as potential House Speaker to replace Kevin McCarthy is Jim Jordan, Tom Emmer, and Steve Scalise. I think it's got to be Trump. It's got to be Trump for one simple reason. He would unify. It would, it would end the fighting. Mm -hmm. No one is going to want to be the person who said, I told Donald Trump, currently the most popular man running for president, the front runner, I told him no and obstructed. If Trump comes in, first of all, I don't think he just goes and insults one side or the other side or, or this group or that group or this person. He actually says, here's what we're going to get done. Here's, here's what we're going to make happen. And whether it be Matt Gates or anyone else, they're going to be like, I'm going to defer to Donald Trump. Yeah, I think from a numbers perspective, you have to get the 218 votes. And looking at some of these other names on the list, Jim Jordan, I think he's also probably a front runner if Trump is not interested. Uh, but Steve Scalise and Tom Emmer, they're both going to have tremendous trouble getting the 218. Uh, President Trump comes in. He's already have like he already has like 110 congressional endorsements for his presidential right. bid. Mm -hmm. And, you know, DeSantis is the second closest with four. And so, you know, President Trump is the most popular Republican in the party and in Congress right now. And, and so. In Congress. I mean, and not even as a member of Congress, but considering he's the front runner. I'm wondering what would happen. Considering he said he'll do it, that he's been asked to do it, he's been nominated. This time, it's more serious than the first time. I remember when uh, Matt Gates nominated Trump first time around, and it was seen as kind of silly because Trump wasn't going to do it. Now that Trump said yes, imagine being that one rank-and-file Republican who has to tell your district you voted against Donald Trump yeah. as Speaker of the House. Yeah. Well, he's already pulling about 60 <laughs> percent. There's no. Yeah. Way. Yeah. Why, why did you uh, not support Trump and go for some rhino? Uh, nope. No, I'm just, you know, look, maybe I'm just saying this because I really want it to happen. But I really want it to happen. Yeah, it would be uh, hilarious. I think it would be uh, hilarious. I, saw, I so badly want it. Yeah, Trump's not really known as a unifier from uh, everything I, I've garnered over the last few years, but this would be the most interesting outcome. Um, and I think he does want it. He wouldn't be saying what he's saying right now if he didn't want the position. So, um, let, I, you know what? Let's do it. I, 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 want, I want to see this. I want to see him there. I want to see him in Congress. I mean, this would also kind of derail his presidential run. Because he wouldn't be able so. to be in key so. states like New Hampshire. He wouldn't be able to be in Iowa. He wouldn't be able to be uh, in places like Michigan as well, where well, he needs to be. Under the, yeah. You're under the assumption that Congress works. It doesn't. It doesn't work. Yeah. I mean, when Nancy Pelosi was speaker, they worked 100 days out of the year. And Kevin McCarthy had a little bit more of a strict schedule with this Congress. But, I mean, you have, you're have you on for yeah, four a bunch days of, and you're off for 12. They're and a bunch so, of lazy welfare queens. You know, and on top and, of that, and, he'd have nonstop media coverage Every camera, yep. every day. I mean, imagine like he's already has basically nonstop media coverage, but this is just this, uh, even more. I, this would not derail his campaign. This would launch it to the moon. Um, imagine he does one little thing, right? Yep. We saw Patrick McHenry boots Nancy Pelosi from her office and it's front page news, a big deal. Nancy Pelosi's like, how oh, is breaking tradition? And it's hilarious. Imagine if Trump orders the floor to be mopped and then they're like, Donald Trump is now ordering janitors around. It's front page news. It would give him press for, for for the entire duration of however long he does it, and it would be worth billions of dollars. Well, and he so. could pull the whole, like, my competitors in the primary are out just fundraising, and, and they're out, and I'm working for the American people. That's a powerful oh, message. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of this. I'm a fan of it purely because it's so entertaining. Well, just looking at the other options, I mean, I think Jim Jordan's the best of the other, the other options, but, you know, Steve Scalise was considering a run against McCarthy during January. That's 
wasn't reported a ton, but there was some reports out there. Uh, Steve wanted that speakership. He was whipping people behind the scenes saying, if Kevin can't make it, I want to be that guy. But I think Steve would have been worse than Kevin. You know, I sat across from Steve in a donor's house in Palm Beach uh, in, uh, I want to say September of 22, two months before the midterms. And I asked Steve, why were you raising money for candidates that impeached Donald Trump? Why were you working against mega candidates running against, you know, some of these these rhinos? And he's like, well, I'll need to take a look at that. I didn't know that we were raising money for these people. I'm like, how don't you know that you're raising money for these people? You were literally there at a fundraiser for them. Oh, I'll have to take a look. I don't remember that. And so, you know, he came down to Palm Beach for a big check. He thought he was the man. And then the donor called me and said, come on over. So I came on over, sat across from Steve and grilled him for an hour. And he left with uh, like a third of the money he came for. He was pissed. So he doesn't wow. like me a whole lot. But then you have Tom Emmer, who's another guy that is not aligned with the voter base. He's not aligned with the Trump Republican Party, which makes up 75% of Congress, if not more. And, you know, he was telling donors not to donate to Trump in 2024. Uh, allegedly, he was also going uh, on CNN before the midterms telling candidates his advice to them is don't say Trump's name when you're campaigning. Meanwhile, he's sending out dozens of fundraising emails saying, this is Donald Trump and we need you to donate to the NRCC. And so you have these people with a lot of baggage. And again, you have to get to 218. And so if you're doing math, you're not going to get to 218 if you're some of these other guys and you have all of these people working against you. So, so some people are asking in the super chat, they heard that Donald Trump can't be speaker because he's under indictment and that's not allowed. But that's just a GOP rule that they could literally just be like, OK, we don't care anymore. I, it really just comes down to the Republicans being like, yeah, we don't care. We want Trump. What but, do you guys think? But, is, but yeah. real quick, real quick. Sorry, sorry. No. It could give an excuse to a Republican when he votes against Trump as speaker. And his constituents or, or her constituents say, why didn't you support Trump? And he says, we, the we, GOP rule or, we had a rule yeah. that says that you can't be. And, and they're trying to break the rule. And I just think that's wrong. And that, that'll be their out. Let's say uh, uh, Trump becomes speaker. What is going to be his first move? Impeach Joe Biden. I mean, honestly, yeah, he might want to bring it yeah. to the floor. He's also got to fully cut any funding for Ukraine and make that the hill because, you know, that that was the big thing that everybody's pissed off about. That I, I think investigating the Hunter issue. Biden yeah, would, that's be, would be yeah. a, a very important uh, aspect. He also demanded that Europe finance this Ukrainian war and the United States pay less uh, for this conflict as well. So, um, yeah, if, Congress does have purchasing powers. So if he becomes speaker... And then brings like Marjorie Taylor Greene's Biden impeachment to the floor. And then Biden gets impeached. And now what's, what's the current balance of power in the Senate? We've got uh, Feinstein is out. It's very close. It's very close. Yeah. Well, Feinstein is out. And then um, so I, I so where, where does that put them right now? And you've got Menendez, Menendez, Menendez is on the ropes. Yeah, they're not going to kick him out because they need that vote. Yeah. I know. Uh, I know. But but where are they currently? Is it still a tie? I think it's a tie. Even with Feinstein out? No, because yeah. they disappointed. No, she just yeah. got replaced yeah. by uh, they, right. a black Labor. lesbian. Yeah. A black yeah. lesbian from <laughs> Maryland. Yes. From Maryland? Yes. yes. So the woman lived in Maryland, according to you a know, tweet about it. You know what was really interesting is that, I think it was Mike Cernovich pointed this out, that Adam Schiff wanted to run. Yeah. And now he, he's basically been spiked because of this. But, but my point is, if Donald Trump gets Kamala and uh, Biden both impeached... As Speaker of the House, he's president. He's president. <laughs> well, you have to go through the Senate, and I mean, we yeah, don't have we yeah. don't have friends. But that's why I was asking yeah. about like what's the balance currently yeah. at? You know, yeah, but you're right, you're right. But, I mean, we the Biden has more friends in the Senate on the Republican side than Trump does. I mean, I think our Senate's a dis disaster. I mean, but, we are so frustrated with the House, and I think it's easy to blame the House. And you know, McCarthy, you know, did get a lot of the heat and the blame. But the Senate is impossible to work with on these issues. You have Republican senators going on field trips to Ukraine just as often as the Democrats are. And I, I, real quick, I just need to point out, too, in order to convict an impeachment, you need what, like 63 or something, 65? I think you need super majority. Yeah, yeah it's not it's not just 50, 51. And you got Lindsey Graham in there, Mitt Romney and all these horrible rhinos and politicians that don't give a damn about anybody. Right. And Lady G, also known as Lindsey Graham. But, you know, right before the election, Lindsay was like, Joe Biden's one of the kindest people I've ever met in my life. I'm like, these people make me sick. And so, you know, we have like 10 good senators. Uh, if you're a Republican, you have 10 good senators and that's it. And so we have a long way to go up there. Uh, Kerry Lake's running for the Senate again. So we'll, we'll see what happens in Arizona. But again, for the uh, first time, for the first time. Yeah. Rather. Yeah. Yes. But so that's official, right? She, she, she did it. She announced well, for Senate. It, it, yeah. Tuesday's the, the yeah. launch, but we'll see what happens. Uh, 
But yeah, I said it's a disgrace. But I think Trump for Speaker is what the what the people want and what the yes. people need. And I I hope like his first move is just to like annoy and and agitate. You know, like we we saw Nancy Pelosi get evicted, and it was hilarious. And I'm like, you know, I got to be honest. If the only thing we get out of Matt Gates's efforts and these other Republicans, then uh, is Nancy Pelosi getting evicted. I'm, I'm happy with that. Oh, right? yeah. Because uh, uh, w- with Kevin McCarthy in, you might as well have a Democrat majority. Funding for Ukraine, you name it. Democrat policies are getting what they want. It's remarkable to me that the Republican majority says we actually are scrutinizing Ukrainian funding. And the Democratic Party says we're for it. So Kevin McCarthy goes, I'm going to go with the Democrats on this one. I mean, that, what was the point of winning in 2022? What was the point of all the effort? So he's got to go. And then if Donald Trump comes in, I don't see him. I got to be honest. I do see Trump negotiating with Democrats for sure. He's going to be more moderate than people expect. Trump will probably be a bit more moderate. I, I shouldn't say moderate. Trump will be a bit more favorable to the establish, establishment than Matt Gates would be. But Trump would be substantially better than I, I guess anyone else you could get. Well, and the people want him. I think, well, and in the Senate, you've got Mitch McConnell, who believes last week, as he said, that the number one priority of Republicans is to support the war effort in Ukraine. And it's like, you can't be more out of touch with the base than that. And so if he comes in and has a few key issues that he drives forward, if he talks about immigration, I mean, even the Democrats are waking up to how awful illegal immigration is in their cities. And so it's like, if he made some of these issues kind of key focal points, if he brought up pictures of the evidence from Hunter Biden on stage and like called out the sham that this is that he only got a slap on the wrist for a filing issue with a firearm like he, yeah. he would immediately have traction with uh, I think a lot of people in the house that would say he's legit this is cool you know I've worked with a lot of the Congress members and I've worked with them before they be, they got into Congress and they they run and they have all these ideas and they have all this excitement they want to make all of this change and then they get there and they introduce something and it has to sit it sits there until it gets through a committee and then you know the committee might not even break and so they didn't realize how slow of a process this really was right like congress is a broken institution mm-hmm. and uh you can go in with great intentions but it's so easy to fall into the you know the the swamp this is, this is what i don't get like does someone have dirt on bobert marjorie and and thomas massey right because like their, their, their full-throated defense of Kevin McCarthy and Thomas Massey going so far to say, like yelling that if, if, they, if we remove him, this institution will fail. And I'm just like, bro, no one in this country likes your institution. Are you so removed from what this is that you can't, you can't see that? That the American people would rather watch Congress? We, we, we mentioned this the other day. If you go to any single American, 82% of the time you ask them, would you rather we replace all members of Congress with golden retrievers... <laughs> Or leave it the way it is. A golden retriever. Absolutely. Obstruction of doofy dogs running around playing is better than what we got. Yeah, well, Boebert's in a a very difficult district. So Boebert won her election by like 200 votes this last time. And not only does she have the Democrat Party working against her, she has a ton of Republicans spending big money against her. And so I'm not saying that she she sided with Kevin McCarthy, but what she's trying to do is she's trying to keep that seat. If and I think her seat's important to keep because our map is super small. We just lost a district in Alabama because of redistricting. And if you look across the country, we're never going to have this 30 seat majority again for the next few decades. Like we have super small majorities either way, just because of the way the math is. And, and if that's the case and the fear is if I stand against Kevin McCarthy, I will not get the funding to win. The way you solve this problem is by all of these people standing up to Kevin McCarthy. Tell him he is no longer welcome, and these deals that he cuts behind the scenes don't play, won't play anymore. But if, if you get people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, she, I get it, she wants her committee assignments. She was booted off last time around, and so she's trying to be more, I guess, I guess she's trying to, to play ball to a certain degree. I don't mean that disrespectfully. I mean, she's, she's trying to, like, get what she can, she, get, get, what she can uh, get done done. But all that does is kick the can down the road and perpetuate the problems. I think what Matt Gates is doing is the right move. And I think these problems get solved overnight if all of these people who are at risk go to Kevin and say, you know what, fine, do it. Pull the funding. Don't support us. I literally don't care anymore. Let them have it. Call their bluff. Well, that's what's weird that the criticism of Gates was that this will cause chaos. I'm like, well, I'd prefer chaos versus destruction yeah, of our just, life exactly like <laughs> if the options are an institution being irreparably broken screwing me over 
or chaos. I'm going to choose chaos. Plus, regardless of how you feel about the matter, Matt Gates' speech to the reporters that night on the Capitol steps when he was sharing basically a three-minute spiel about why he did what he did, like, you can't really disagree with any of his words. Americans don't feel heard. They don't feel represented by these people. We elect them. They go off. They use our money against us. Yep. And the Uniparty has become a very clear, established thing, and it no longer serves the interests of the American people. So he has every right to kind of lay the foot down. I want to pull up it. this. Uh, I got this tweet from Matt Gates. He said, OK, let's negotiate. My GOP colleagues want to raise the threshold on the motion to vacate. OK, let me pause right there. For, for right now, it takes a single person to file this is something that Matt got negotiated the first time around. A single person can file, and then they have to vote. Right now, the argument is they should raise the threshold and make it harder. So Matt says, this is a question for all of them, the GOP. If we enact the reforms Rep. Ro Khanna lays out here, how high would you like the motion to vacate threshold to be? Because I'll basically give you whatever you want on the motion to vacate for this stuff. And what is he saying? A ban on congressional stock trading, 12-year term limit for Congress, and a ban on political donations from lobbyists or PACs. Here, here, Matt Gates. Mm -hmm. And this is a Democrat. This is a bipartisan effort. Yeah. Yeah. C can they wear the corporate logos that also finance them and support them on their suits? That's a great idea. Yeah, like I, think, I think that would be also a very fair. And, now, and now, if you're concerned, as a member of Congress, that you need the money and the backing from the machine... Here's a way you can you can go out with a bang. If if you if you think you're not coming back, work with Matt Gates on getting Rep Rokana's reforms, anti-corruption plan, and fundamentally change the game. You know what I think happens though? It happens to everybody. Name name an individual who's idealistic and says, "When I get in, I'm going to fix this stuff." And what happens? Donald Trump said he was going to arrest Hillary Clinton. He didn't do that. Why? Everyone gets in and then says, "One, I have to prioritize." Do I want to build a wall, secure the border, or spend my time chasing after Hillary Clinton? And that's why she falls to the back. Ah, we're not going to do it. We're not, we're not going to go for it. People get into Congress, and they're like, I am going to fight this machine. And then what happens? They jump into the river for the first time. They're, they're watching the flow, and they say, I'm going to jump in there, and I'm going to push back. And then eventually, the river sweeps them up. They're sitting there thinking, like, what can I get done in these broken institutions? Because if you, re if you resist... You get swept up, you go off the water, you go off the cliff, the waterfall. But if you play ball, maybe you can get a little bit more money for your district. Maybe you can bring about a little social change right here or there. But the big changes they don't they don't get. Now, in my view, I think you're better off just standing your ground, holding your own. And if everyone who said I'm going to get in to make a change did, there'd be change overnight. Mm -hmm. The problem is people go in. And now we're looking at Marjorie Taylor Greene supporting the establishment candidate who is working with Democrats in secret. Lauren Boebert doing the same thing. And I get it. Is Lauren Boebert capable of doing anything if she gets ousted in the, in the, in the next, in, in next, next year? No, of course not. So she needs as much support as she can get. So she's building allies. But then what do we get? The same broken, corrupt institution the American people despise over and over and over again. Until someone says... Yo, I don't care to be part of a broken institution. I will stand against it to try and fix it. it like, like Matt is doing, actually, until we get more people joining in, it's just the American people are going to keep spitting on and laughing at and mocking Congress. Yeah, I think, I mean, the term limits thing would solve a lot of the problems. I think the, that would solve a lot, even a lot of the financial problems uh, because a freshman member comes in, they typically don't get the best committee assignments. Uh, but a lot of the lobbyists and the, the big the special interest groups, they see who has the potential to climb the ranks and eventually get the chairmanship or a ranking member uh, position on these committees. And once you, that's when you have the real power. That's when you decide where the money's going. That's when you decide who's getting the contracts. And so, um, you know, if you're only in there for 12 years, like, you know, you, you don't really have the time to play that game. And I think that would make the committee members become not just like right now, it's like a seniority thing. If you're there for X amount of years and you, and you are on this committee, then you deserve the chairmanship. And you need to break that mold. You have to have the most competent and capable people in that role, people that can't get bought. I think one of the best things of this current Congress is having a guy named Jason Smith on the Ways and Means Committee. He's the one that's un, you know, uh, surfacing all of the IRS whistleblower stuff. He's, he's a guy you probably never hear from. You probably always hear about Jim Jordan and J James Comer, but you never hear Jason Smith. Jason Smith's the one that's producing results, but he's not sending out fundraising emails saying, hey, support me. And so um, Jason Smith was not supposed to be the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee. Seniority would have had a guy named Vern Buchanan do that. But I'll give credit where credit is due. Kevin McCarthy 
put Jason Smith on that committee, and he said he's that guy. And so um, you need competent and capable people that can't be bought. Jason's one of those guys. We need more like Jason. Trump, just put Trump as speaker. Guys, if you're in Congress, you're Republican, and you're like, this is insane, everybody's fighting, just vote Trump. Have you ever heard one good argument against any of these points? Like why? Well, term limits, yes. What's the argument against Ron term Paul. limits? You get someone as good as Ron Paul, you don't want him to leave. You want him to hold his ground and do his best. But Ron Paul was also fighting for term limits. Yeah, because isn't that where the sort of Washington attitude comes in of like, hey, I know you want me, but I'm out. Well, the I'm issue, going back to my farm. I'm going to... That's what power was supposed to be. It was supposed to be people that have built businesses or served their communities. They go in, they work in Congress for a bit, and then they depart. They keep going with their lives. Like that was the, what it was supposed to the be. The idea is with, uh, with, with term limits... You will have shadow organizations that are propping up their their next crop of candidates, and they're they'll be cultivating them years in advance, and then they're going to control the political front runners. And they and they do they do this they they do they're you know they they will get press attention for their young person they want to run eventually, and the idea with term limits is it would actually the the, the rare time you get someone good who's very popular and loved by the community they have to go, and now you're starting from scratch. Meanwhile, you're up against a massive machine that's cranking and churning out these NPC-like candidates. I'm not saying I actually disagree with term limits. I'm, I'm, I'm actually for it for the most part because the, the ban on political donations from lobbyists and PACs, I think, actually solves a lot of those issues. When you were describing that, for some reason, I was thinking about AOC, but uh, that's beyond the yep. point. I'm still very bullish on this NASCAR suit idea, which I think would solve a lot of problems so the American people would know uh, whatever corporation is financing and sponsoring these people. But I don't think there's anything solving this problem. Yeah. If we look at this problem, it's been consistent. It's, it's been going on for a very long time. I still remember when uh, we were making videos, there was a new study that came out, and this was... Uh, when we were talking many, many years ago, uh, specifically looking at the wants, interests, and needs of the American people that never get met in Congress. Was Special a, was interest a, groups was a big, do get met. It's a big Occupy Wall Street talking point. Exactly. And, and, it's a, and it's an honest, it's a real talking point when you look at the data, when you look at the people's wants and needs, and you look at what Congress is doing, it's usually the exact opposite of that, as of course, they're for the wars, they're for uh, the medical intervention in our lives, they're for extra regulations, extra rules that prevent people from competing with the billion in their class that of course they support fully so so I, I don't think there's any fixing this problem i think that there's there's people who are going to walk away from this problem and i think that's going to be the biggest solution out of all of this in my opinion i think one thing that trump doesn't get enough credit for is his five-year lobbying ban on federal officials so you can't yeah. go from a federal office job to lobbying like yeah. you used to and so that he got that done the new thing now is tv contracts yeah so there's a MSNBC. story about ken buck who was actually one of the guys that voted to remove mccarthy but he did so because he felt like mccarthy was too aggressive against hunter biden and so you know ken buck said i'm not gonna vote for this impeachment and then he walked it back but then there's a story that came out that said ken buck was in negotiations with cnn <laughs> to get a contract and leave Congress. And so, you know, if you look at like Jason Chaffetz from Utah, he left Congress, got Fox News contract. Trey Gowdy left con uh, Congress, got Fox News contract. Booster seat Adam Kinzinger left Congress, got CNN contract. And so because you have this lobbying ban now, the corporate press is just going up and buying these people's opinions and having them go, you know, not lobby, but message. And so, you know, we have to figure out, we have to stop Congress and these federal jobs from being stepping stones to more lucrative careers. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think there's a very simple solution uh, as to how we implement the solution to be determined. But the general idea is you get uh, uh, term limits. Right. If you're president, you get two terms. If you're a member of the Senate, you get two terms. If you're members of Congress, I think you'll get six, 12 years. And then after this, you are sent to Mars. We put you on a spaceship and you help go colonize Mars where you will no longer have any influence, power, authority on Earth. Uh, I know maybe the Mars thing's a little extreme because we don't know where Elon Musk is currently with Starship. But the other idea is we just build an island called like former politician island. And the idea is if you really want to be a politician, you know you are sacrificing your standing in the community, and once you're done, you will not be a part of it. Well, hey, hey, those politicians really do love their islands, okay? Yeah. They love to go on them a lot <laughs> and much. do uh, a so, lot of so, different but, stuff there. So, but but you see, here's the point: you can also trick the bad ones. Be like, hey, remember those islands? Yeah, yeah you're gonna love it. And then they go to the penal colony where they're, you know, living in jump. They have jumpsuits in their little uh, studio. I was cubicles. literally thinking about the idea as you were saying it. 
but no, these, but, these but, politicians, they, they believe that they're still entitled to all their rights as a private citizen when they go and represent us and they forget that they work for us. That was Nancy's whole argument against the congressional stock trading is she said, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a free American. We should be able to trade stocks as a free American. It's like, you don't understand that when you go and actually represent us, you're willing to give up some of your day to day. Yep things because you work for me now like that's what you're acknowledging so no you actually don't get to trade stocks like a free citizen because you have access that i don't have imagine you hire someone you you, let's say you have an ice cream shop and you hire a young person you're like i need you to you know you're gonna work nine to five and you're gonna serve ice cream to the people and they go you got it and then one day you come in it's 3 p.m and they're gone and you're like i'm paying this person where are they and then they come back the next day and they're like i am a free person this is america i'm allowed to go to the park i mean people are allowed to go to the park and you're like yeah but not on my dime yep. if you don't want to work here you're fired if AO, like there are a, there are many many jobs where you are no longer eligible for things right whenever you see uh, uh like a sweepstakes or something you must can like when you felt the form or whatever it's like i confirm my family or i are not employees of said company or whatever Well, that's not fair. I'm an American. I should be able to enter the sweepstakes even though I work for the company. No. When you're in Congress, it's a conflict of interest to bring bills to the floor and vote on them when you are buying stocks or trading on these things. Yeah, so no. That should be absolutely banned. And I'm surprised. Well, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised it's illegal. But I'm just, I. it's something that literally should be banned. Absolutely. And I, a lot of Republicans are the worst offenders. I think Unusual Whales is one of my favorite Twitter accounts yeah, to dude, follow. Always exposing uh, people. Because, you know, I learned so much about the Republican Congress members I had no clue. And, you know, there's this guy out of Georgia, a Republican member, who's like the best stock trader in the world. Um, and so, you know, we, we need to put a, a stop to this. I think there is populist bipartisan support uh, on this. And I'd like to see a bill actually hit the floor. Um, but I'm glad to see that Rokana and Matt Gates can, you know, team up on this. We'll see what happens. Uh, but it, it does need to happen. These- yeah, yeah. It's almost as if both parties are corrupt and they're kind of working together in some kind of uniparty way, screwing over uniparty. and skinning the That's American people. That's a good word. Is that Yeah. Uniparty. I think we just yeah. did. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, so I'm the CEO of a public company and, when, and, and chairman. And so on our board, if you want to be a director or an officer of a public company, you have all these restrictions around how you trade stock. Even you have to issue all the stocks that you've traded in other people people's companies. It's an lengthy document and everything you do is scrutinized and documented. You have blackout periods. Like it's very simple to institute a blackout period for congressmen and women because it's very simple. Like you have access. I have access as the CEO of the company that the public doesn't have. Therefore, I should not be able to trade in the same times that other people do. This is not a, a difficult concept. And if anybody is actually objecting to it, it's purely because they have bad intentions. There's not a good reason as a sitting member of Congress to say, yeah, you know what? We deserve the same rights to trade as other people even while i know what's going to happen with the electric vehicle bill three weeks before anybody else like that's just not fair yeah it's insider trading it is plain and simple yeah what, what, what did they go after martha stewart for i mean whatever it is she did i don't even know it's been a long time but uh it's substantially worse to be directly interfering you know i'll tell you i'll tell you uh out here in florida they have this interesting thing with their, their casinos and california does this as well where you don't play you don't bet against the house so if, you go, if you're in California, you're playing blackjack, there's a blackjack dealer, you, and then the designated player. The designated player is a company that bankrolls when you bankrolls your winnings and, and takes, your, takes, takes the money from you. The reason they have this is the idea, the, the idea in these states, California and Florida do this, and it's not, it's not totally Florida, there's like Seminole, they're, they're uh, or, uh, an Indian, a Native American reservation, so they do whatever they want. But the idea is, if you're running the game and betting against people, you're cheating. Yeah. That's right. So it's, it's like, if I'm like, hey, you want to bet against me? I make the rules and I'm going to determine how the game is played. It's like, yeah, you're getting scammed. In the NFL, a wide receiver for the Atlanta Falcons bet on himself and his own success and got suspended for an entire season. <laughs> <laughs> so like he said, I'm going to be great this game. And he gets this, like a thousand it, bucks. It, it'd be one thing if he said, I'm going to lose. And then he spiked the game. Right. Yeah. But if he's like, I'm the best, I'm going to win. And then he wins. Like, no, you can't do that. Yeah. This is literally what they're doing in Congress. They, they know a bill is being introduced that it's it's like the ban electric cars bill. Then they buy short, they, they short electric car stock, introduce the bill and say, we're now going to vote on banning electric cars. Oh, it might happen. Stock dips, they make a profit, and they go, now nah, we're kicking it back. It's not going to happen. Yeah. And the stock spikes. We Dirty. can't let this continue. And um, I think we are getting a Congress, at least the House, that is becoming 
more aligned with the people a lot closer to the people than the Senate is. But, um, you know, more we need more Matt Gaetzes uh, yeah. in Congress to get that let's, done. Uh, let's talk about this story from the Post Millennial. Reporters confront White House press secretary after Biden announces border wall breaking campaign promise. I love this because apparently Joe Biden is claiming the wall doesn't work and he has no choice but to, but to build it. And then you had, uh, who, who was it? Was it, uh, um, was it Blinken? So uh, some of the Biden admin came out and now they're like, well, we got to have a wall. I'll tell you what you're seeing right here with this story. Joe Biden is violating federal, was it, he broke, was that 24, 26 laws or something like that? 26 federal laws in South Texas to allow the border wall construction. And now I got to say, like, based Joe Biden, <laughs> well, well, here's, here's, here's what happens. All these Democrats are crying their eyeballs out. And now Joe Biden has no choice but to act. This is the th kind of thing that spikes them in 2024. You, th the Republicans are going to play every video of every Democrat saying, let them come, break open the borders, and then we got to close the borders, oh, geez. And they're going to say, don't vote for people who are too stupid to realize that opening the border causes problems. Yep. Yep. Trump wanted $5 billion to build the wall. New York just spent $10 billion to house <laughs> migrants. <laughs> like, and it, it, this stuff is so aggravating because the media will never tell the truth about this. Remember the kids in cages and all these things. Like Trump was the tyrant at the border. This dude now recognizes the you know pile that he's laying in here, and he's trying to make the wise decision finally. And the media will never put it. He's still the compassionate dude, one. I, I it's feel so bad. Frustrating. I feel bad for uh, Jean Pierre because she's not really good at this job, dude. And it's a really difficult moment to have the the president flip flop so heavily. How do you answer that question? Like even a seasoned you know press person is going to be like, this is going to be a challenge. We're going to have to figure out a good answer for this one because. It, Anybody with eyes is going to be like, as soon as Democrats got mad, you guys turned around and flipped on this. She has no good answer. Yeah. I mean, Trump built almost 500 miles of wall yeah. with just incredible pushback. The Democrats did everything they possibly could to stunt this wall like from being built. And he still got 500 miles built. One of my favorite stories about how the Democrats tried stopping the wall was they funded this uh, butterfly migration organization that sued the Trump administration because they couldn't let Mexican butterflies fly into the country. And they successfully halted the wall for like seven months, eight months. And it went all the way up to, you know, some some federal court until they ended up losing. But they used the butterflies to stop Trump from building the wall for a while. Yeah, it really pisses me off. What's interesting is I'm from San Diego, the wall works amazingly there it has transformed the city you know san diego is one of the hubs one of the most primary hubs in the world for sex trafficking and uh it's sad what happens in san diego uh the wall has been a major deterrent of all of that like when, it's when? it's fortified it is actually secure it and what it does too is it forces a lot of migrants if they're still going to try to come into san diego they go via water but the waterways in yeah. san diego if you've ever been massive cliffs it's very hard to get access to the land so they've created this really impenetrable system and you know who's most grateful for it when i was in san diego last living there uh, my community was majority Hispanic. The people, the legal Mexican immigrants were the most thankful for the wall. They're like, we came, we came the right way. They should have to come the right way. They when shouldn't we, be able to do this. We recently went down to uh, Tijuana. And uh, uh, when I was down there, I was in an Uber and the Uber driver was telling us this story. And it was kind of amazing to be told this by an Uber driver in Mexico. He said that he lived for like two decades in the United States. His mom got sick, so he came home to see her. But then he couldn't get back in the country because he had overstayed his visa. He was staying illegally when he was there. And so he worked with human traffickers. He literally said human traffickers. And they threw up a ladder where he climbed 40 feet up or whatever to this massive wall near, uh, near San Diego. And then when the Border Patrol agents were coming, they, they panicked, pulled the ladder and ran and left him up there. And he fell down and broke his legs or whatever. And he, got, he fell back on the other side. And I'm just like, it is insane that, this, that you, these people feel like they can just openly say these things about how they're trying to come into the United States, breaking our laws... But the other crazy thing is the story is he's basically saying the wall kept me out. Wow. Yeah. Works. But Biden's recognizing it's working. How many federal things did he waive in order to do this? Did you say 26? 26 federal laws in South Texas. Well, Biden is now losing to Trump in 10 of the 11 polls yep. that the real clear politics average counts. And uh, one of the major issues is immigration. And Trump beats Biden on immigration 52 to 28. And so, you know, the people are sick of what's happening at the border, 
and Joe Biden recognizes it, it's going to be an absolute bloodbath for them and the Democrats in 2024 if they don't at least pretend to address well, this. Right, right now, the polls that have Biden up are the outliers. So if you do a poll and you find Joe Biden is ahead, you should, if you are responsible, report to your audience, this must be an anomalous poll. So when the ABC Washington Post poll came out with ten, with Trump up 10 points, they said, this is clearly an outlier. It's it's a blip. Ignore it. Ignore it. And it's like, well, you know, fair point. It is 10 points is a big, heavy swing. A lot of ties. And Trump seems to be winning more than he's losing. So at this point, if we're going to hold up that same standard with Biden, according to YouGov, up five, that's an outlier. We shouldn't we should consider it to be incorrect because Trump's actually winning almost every other poll. Yeah. And the Democrats know this. Uh, you can tell because they've arrested Trump four times uh, <laughs> and they're changing their tune on immigration. Well, so. you, see, you, you know what they're doing now with, with the fraud lawsuit? They, I, 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 I believe they will seize as much of Trump's assets as possible with this method. They can't just come out and strip Trump of his net worth, of, his, of the things he owns, because then, you know, there's going to be questions about whether or not we actually live in a country anymore. But here's what we've seen so far with the judge. The judge summarily decrees without hearing any evidence and rejecting actual evidence proving Trump was innocent and says the Trump organization overvalued its properties. Mar-a-Lago is only worth $18 million. You've got real estate developers and investors in Florida who are not Republican and not political scoffing and complaining. They're like, what do you think you're doing? That's not true. Our property is worth a lot of money. And so here's what happens. Right now, the trial that Trump is facing is to determine whether or not he falsified business records. If the judge has already summarily decreed with no legal basis that Trump's properties are not actually worth what the bank claimed and what he claimed and the appraisers claimed, it's kind of a bold thing for someone to do. But the judge said, no, 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 I'm the one who's going to determine what your property is worth. It's only 10 million, not 100 million. OK, now they're going to go to court and, and Trump's going to be like, here are the documents. And the judge is going to go, that document says the building's worth $100 million, But we've already determined it's only worth $10 million. That means you falsified a document. Guilty. You are hereby liable for fraud against the state of New York. And you now owe us $250 million. We'll start by seizing that gigantic tower that's only worth $10 million. You see what they're doing? By claiming Mar-a-Lago is worthless, when they file to seize Trump's assets, because he owes them $250 million, they're going to use that to seize everything. That's the game. So I think the next move they'll make is we will hear that Donald Trump is found liable of fraud because he falsified records. He'll, he'll owe the state or, or some you know regulatory firm or whatever $250 million because it's, it's Letitia James who's filing the suit. Then they're going to seize a, a $500 million property but claim it's worth $10 million and say, okay, now you owe us another 240. million. And they'll keep doing it until Trump has nothing left. It's sick what's happening. And there's there's no jury in this case. <clears throat> it is a Democrat activist judge. Who's, who's a smiling in the camera. Who's, who's a Democrat Loves the donor. Spotlight. It's a complete shit show. And, you know, we can't let this we can't let this stand. Well, I think there's no jury intentionally. I think Trump doesn't want a jury. A New York jury is just going to rule against you. It's a waste of time. It's a, it, the Trump team probably knows if they went for a jury trial, they'd end up losing either way. But this time it would actually cost them, you know, 30 million dollars in, in a legal battle. Their attitude probably right now is the judge has has actually done Trump a favor with the summary judgment because now Trump is going to appeal. He's been planning to appeal. He needs to get it outside of, you know, uh, of, of New York City, basically. And that's where his actual chance of winning is going to be. Don't waste time and money with a jury trial. Let the judge say what he says, and then you can appeal. And the judge made the mistake of being a moron and saying, I'm going to summary judgment. mar lago was worthless. Yeah. Now Trump's got all of the all of the room to appeal and be like, there is no sane, reasonable human who thinks it's fraud when the third party, when the external party that you're doing a deal with has determined the value for you. They're claiming it's fraud that Donald Trump had that, that Trump, Donald Trump bought a property or that he found a property, went to a bank. And he said to the bank, I want to buy this property. The bank sends out a third party appraiser who then says to the bank, it's worth, you know, $100 million. And then Trump goes, you got it. They went, That's fraud. <laughs> what? It sh if, and if you come out and reject the, the, the appraisal from the appraiser third party and like submit separate documents and like falsified documents. OK, there's a question. If they want to come out and make those claims, sure. But for the time being, the judge has rejected 
any hearing based on the facts. And the Trump organization says they have testimony from their lenders who are thanking, like they're saying they made us a lot of money. It was a good deal. $40 million in interest the banks got. Yeah. Well, and like appraisals are helpful, but still at the end of the day, real estate is worth whatever anybody's willing to pay for it. And nobody right. with their right mind would say that Mar-a-Lago would be sold for $18 million today. It's 28 acres, beautiful real 17. estate. 17.5. So, sorry, 17.5, and right on the ocean. Has lake no, no, access. No, no. It's and both. Ocean access. Yeah. I, I just learned It's got this. a tunnel under the road. Yeah. To get wow. out to the beach club. Wow. I learned yes. this. I learned this. We learned this from Lara Trump the other day. Mar-a-Lago, I, I'm, so, I'm such an idiot. It literally means from the ocean to the to the lagoon. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, duh, Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> ocean uh, to lagoon. Uh, a, a, property, a property right down the road, so just their land, I think sold for like $400 million. Just yeah. a bunch of trees. Oh, dude, like 30.3 acres is ten five ten million million. Ken Griffin bought a similar lot the size of Mar-a-Lago for about 400 or $500 million. And, and so just the lot alone is worth hundreds of millions of dollars. On top of that, Mar-a-Lago is a functioning, profitable business. Yep. And so, like, who made the affirmative action attorney general a real estate expert overnight? Like, she's clueless, and I'm glad she was dumb enough to post this, you know, like, campaign-style graphic on her Twitter account. She's getting ratioed into oblivion. I think there's, like, 14,000 comments on it saying that she's an idiot, which she is. Um, but it's just sad what they're putting these people through. And... Um, Let's They're let's a let's good family. Let's talk about some other people being put through some stuff from Politico. Lawyers bail on my pillows. Mike Lindell saying he owes millions in fees, and Mike Lindell is saying he is facing multiple IRS audits. This is what happens when you go up against corruption. There are evil people in government. There have been for a long time. They are working in intelligence agencies. They are abject evil. Their goals are for self-preservation and for self-benefit. And if you exercise your rights as an American, they will do everything they can to destroy you. Don't take my word for it. How about Chuck Schumer's? Six ways from Sundays if you piss them off. Is that the American way? That the intelligence agencies run this country and you have no right, you have no say, and only by their good graces are we allowed to function in society? I reject that. Yeah, I mean, we know that IRS has a very bad record, especially when it came to going after people for political purposes, especially under the Obama administration, mm -hmm. which they were caught red handed doing. I, I think it's fair to say that that's exactly what's happening right now to, to Mike Lundell. And uh, he's not the first one. I think what happened to Alex Jones is the first kind of financial attack and, and cancellation that is being utilized by the system and establishment to try to bleed out the resources, try to stop any kind of, uh, of just power and authority from human beings being able just to speak out, just to be able to silence them by taking away all of their money, all of their resources, has been, let's be honest here, somewhat of an effective strategy by the establishment. And it's a scary one because you look at these stories, you're like, am I going to get audited? Am I going to be able to find lawyers? As of course, lawyers are literally being indicted as well um so it's it's just uh i, I think this is lawfare i, I think this is a, a weaponized doj justice system that has been financed and bankrolled by george soros who of course is weaponizing district attorneys all throughout the united states and this is why i think it's important to to live in places that actually represent your ideas not just because of the possibility of this kind of lawfare but if if there's even an incident where you have to defend yourself you want to jury that actually respects the right of human beings to protect themselves. A lot of democratic places don't have that at all. They have district attorneys that will punish you for just even standing up for yourself, which is crazy. It's mind boggling. Yeah. Well, this is also less than two weeks after American Express came out and said that they were severely limiting Mike Lindell's credit limit. Yeah. And that's what his business relies on. Like he's, he's making hundreds of millions of dollars a year in revenue and has a very functioning business servicing millions of Americans. So what you're seeing here is weaponization of government and also the weaponization of private enterprise together in tandem to silence someone because of his political views. What's severely ironic about all of this is that the progressive authoritarians in society that conduct this type of madness will accuse us of being fascists. When the actual definition of fascism is an authoritarian government and private enterprise partnering together to stifle the views of political opposition. That's exactly what's happening here. And they want to send a very loud message that if you dare speak up as a business owner or as a politician or as a community leader, or as a podcast host or whatever it might be, if you dare speak up, they will weaponize private and public enterprise against you and your values and your family. They're doing it to Rudy Giuliani. I mean, it's, it's absurd what's happening. 
I don't know if any of you have met Mike, but Mike is one of the nicest, kindest, and most generous people I've ever met in my life. He's he's uh, always wants to be helpful. He always tries to build people up. You know, he's been financially impactful on so many lives of conservatives. You know, a lot of conservatives have a hard time finding advertisers, and Mike Lindell was right there to step up. And so not only are they going after Mike, they're going after all of those people that he's supporting. Steve Bannon, one of his big advertisers, is MyPillow. If you look at a lot of these podcasters, MyPillow like subsidizes a lot yeah. of these people. When there was a boycott on Tucker Carlson, it was Mike Lindell that stepped up and said, yeah. I'm going to promote my pillows on the Tucker Carlson. Show. You know what I mean? At a certain point, people can only have so many pillows, right? Like, what do you but do? it's a, but it's about my the principle. Wife, about you can build a pillow fort. She has like 40 <laughs> pillows on her bed. But I think it was just so many Americans saw what they were doing to Mike, canceling yeah. him because of his political beliefs. And, and I think that's why public square has been such uh, a rocket to the moon um, because people want to shop with their values and say, maybe I need three pillows or four pillows every three months now and just because i want to support mike lindell because this guy sacrificed a lot just because you know and, and so well you know, he's got towels and bathrobes and slippers bed sheets. and bed sheets. It's not, sheets not just pillows i'm just you know, is he on public square he is and uh we're actually he's he's we're becoming close uh he's he's an amazing man i echo alex's thoughts this is a part of a broader theme too of canceling advertisers we saw with rumble two weeks ago in the whole russell brand thing burger king hello fresh pulling so something we're trying to do at Public Square, we have 70,000 plus small businesses that all want to advertise in the parallel economy. So now we're trying to push them to creators and say, hey, you've got now creators, a network of advertisers that will not cancel you. Here's the next thing you do. You're, already, you're, you're probably already doing it and you are doing it to a certain extent is create the back end portal for social media networking. So then the, the, the pink thing people need to understand about YouTube is that the bulk of the revenue YouTube, YouTubers get is not from big companies, from small companies. Small, a small diner in a local area with a few thousand people will spend 50 bucks putting mm -hmm. out ads so that the videos appear. And then if you're, you know, you're living in this town and you're watching a YouTube video, the commercial you see will, for, will be for Lou's Diner down the street. And they're only spending 50 bucks. But when you add all of those little diners, you, the YouTube creator ends up getting a couple grand or something like that. Creating that, uh, there, there have been a bunch of attempts at this throughout in the past where companies have popped up and said, if you're a YouTuber, sign up, and then we connect you with sponsors that are looking for content or whatever. The only problem is YouTube had automated it. Yep. The issue now is advertisers are pulling out of YouTube. Activists are threatening people to try and get advertisers pulled. So I think, I don't know if you guys are already, idea. If you're already working on it, but if you sign up and you say like, hey, I make content, then you can see people being like our budget for advertising this month is 25 to 50 bucks here's what we're looking to promote and then you basically like accept and then message them and then boom now you've got an automated system for people who make content to make money and promote products build that parallel economy it's a brilliant idea because you have literally tens of thousands of businesses across the country that have felt disenfranchised rejected by yelp google TripAdvisor. these platforms are no longer built for the interests of small businesses especially not ones that have conservative leanings and so they're asking us every day how do we get more involved in the parallel economy when they see bud light and target tank that 30 billion dollars doesn't just eviscerate it's got to go somewhere it consumer purchase, right well, I think, new, and, and, and so if you can if you can actually shift the advertising world to be one that's cancel proof like and then the parallel economy can kind of broker all those interactions like it's a very powerful impenetrable force hey look uh ultra right conservative yeah. dad's beer yeah what, what did what did seth sell like two million, million bucks and like 12 hours after was, the trump picture? half a million in 12 hours a million within like a day or two and then amazing. he says by the time he closes out it'll be like two million dollars amazing man just, I just want everybody to listen, okay? Because you know, a lot of people are like, how do I succeed in life? And you got so many people that are willing to dump thousands of dollars into these get-rich-quick programs where like, you'll go to a seminar and a guy's like, I'm going to teach you the secret to success. And here's a dude, Seth Weathers, like, Bud Light's nasty, so I'm going to sell beer. Yep. And now he just sold a couple million dollars worth of beer. Yep. So if you're looking how to, what, what to do, help build the parallel economy. Mm -hmm. Invest in a small business or a product. Do what you can to say F you to the, the corporations that despise you. Mike Lindell paved the way. Yeah, it's true. And they hate him for it. You know, there's so many creators that probably would never have been able to get their voices heard if it weren't for Mike. And, uh, you know, Mike's a patriot and we'll pray for him. And uh, it's sick what they're doing to the guy, but I know the guy's a fighter and he's a man of faith. And so I, I think he'll, he knows he'll get out of this, but uh, they've been putting this guy through hell for three years now. Yep.
Well, they did the same to Alex Jones, and yeah. Alex Jones is very persistent. He's he's still able to survive. There's also a lot of lawsuits happening right now against Tucker Carlson. There's yep. another big lawsuit against Elon Musk. So these people are being attacked, I believe, in a coordinated way to try to, of course, stifle any kind of resistance, any kind of speech against the establishment. So I don't think a lot of these incidences are, are coincidences. I do think there is something top down happening here. Are, are you guys working on any kind of like social co- component because we've had people ask us about that yeah to a degree um the world of social commerce is growing a lot like you even see tiktok starting to play with some commerce ideas um which is a disaster and just a chinese data mining farm but that said we have uh the desire to get more into the world of connecting people locally to businesses and other consumers where you can actually like follow a local business get exclusive discounts because you're following local businesses and be a part of kind of the cast brew network right so you're a part of a local club essentially that is partnered in loyalty to these different businesses the the other thing that's interesting and you bring this up and my encouragement to any young entrepreneurs people that are fascinated in the parallel economy over 12 trillion dollars in assets are going to transfer in the next eight years between the baby boomer run businesses wow. down to the next generation 12 trillion in assets so we have two options one is those baby boomer run businesses can either disappear into the ether that's awful they can be bought up by blackstone on the private equity side and transformed against our values or they can be purchased by patriots and turned into incredible sources for the parallel economy my my recommendation go on like acquire.com there are all these sites where these small businesses are up for sale and if you're good at marketing and you can grow like you can purchase a business for twenty thousand dollars and transform its sales and now all of a sudden you have this incredible tool to capitalize on the need for americans to have alternative solutions now you can only really do that if you're genuine like you have to actually believe in it otherwise no we should hone in on this because throughout human history it has always been predominantly private enterprise business and capitalism that has saved people from the woes and problems that the government has started and i truly do believe that voting with your dollar is way more important than voting every four freaking years you have a choice. You could support Cast Brew. You could support the We Are Change Shop. You could support businesses made in America on public street, or you could support the Pope Rothschild inclusive capitalism ESG BlackRock scams that are screwing <laughs> you over and literally taking your money and running psychological operations and a war against you in the fifth generation. This is something that I think people need to understand now more than ever. You're, if you're buying Starbucks, if you're buying Netflix, if you're buying from Disney, what are you doing? What money? Where are you putting your energy towards? What are you getting in response to that? Usually seed oils, usually I, usually harmful stuff. You could be supporting so many different companies, so many different organizations, and allowing ideas to be sponsored can, by your energy. I can help. I can help. I want everyone to, to close your eyes, and I want you to imagine this right now. When you go to a woke corporation, imagine as you enter the store that there is a gigantic, morbidly obese, disgusting, hideous creature with mustard stains and grease all over its face going, give me more. And you're like, sounds good. And you're handing money. But next door, there is a glistening, ripped Donald Trump saying, (laughs) give me your money and we will support American values. You can make that choice. What do you want? Do you want the disgusting, morbidly obese, body positivity, purple haired monster? Or, or 63213 Donald <laughs> Trump. Can, can we just do a small mom and pop business? That's just me personally. All right, but, all right. uh, you know, okay, I don't want to get no uh, erotica here. You know? Okay. The next door is a humble local family. There you go. And there's, and yeah. there's the, the nice old man who says, you know, my grandfather started this business and he gave it to my dad who gave it to me. And. We're just here to make sure you get the products you need. Now, our milk is fresh. There's no seed oils or high fructose corn syrup in any of our food, and it's readily available right for you. That's, yep. that, that's like a component of the American dream. This like view of the wholesome farmer. You come in, it's your neighbor. He's got that farm fresh butter for you. He says I, howdy. I, you, know, you, know what I, you know what it's like? I feel really bad for people in cities. Because we live, you know, we're out in the tri-state, like we're in, we're in the, western, uh, the eastern panhandle of West Virginia. We can drive in any direction 10 minutes, and there is a farm where they're quite literally like, here is fresh butter right from the cow. And it's the most delicious butter you'll ever have. All grass-fed, nat- grass-fed and finished. And uh, a lot of these places, because the laws, will have what we call pet milk. It's milk, it's raw, right from the cow, but it's for animals. Because it's not for human consumption. 
But of course, people will buy it and they'll drink it. You live in a city, you know what people do? They go to specialty stores and pay a premium yeah. to buy real food. Because the average food a person buys is plastic garbage. Isn't that crazy? Plastic or inflammatory Dude. or designated to destroy your hormones and your endocrine system. There's a biological war happening right now that a lot of people don't even realize to how horrible a lot of the substances at the supermarket are. There's so many ingredients that are banned all over the world, but they're okay here in the United States yeah. with a corrupted FDA that has a revolving door with Monsanto, revolving door with all the horrible corporations that do factory farms. And one of the best decisions that I, I, I made in my life is deciding... I'm not going to go to the supermarket. There's a local farm here. Yep. I support that local farm. I have a deal with that local farm. I make sure I get whatever I need uh, from that local farm. My money is in the community. It's not towards a, it's, me a mega corporate it's, giant it's, it's, that's it's, causing it's, me inflammation and death and cancer. It's not even that. Where we live, we have so much food outside, just wild, right? So pawpaw season is, is happening now and we're on the way out. You just have these, they're, they're in the, I guess they're in the mango family. They call them hillbilly banana. And there are just big green fruits everywhere. You grab them right off the tree and you, you break it right open. And it's like mango and banana combined. Amazing. People who live in cities go to the grocery that. store and they get high fructose corn syrup flavored drink. And it's, uh, uh, what, what, what is the beaver butt flavor? We the talked, blueberry flavor? Was it, I don't think it's blueberry. It's probably strawberry or something. Was it strawberry? They, the artificial flavoring for a lot of these, these fruit drinks, I think it's strawberry, comes from the anal glands of a beaver. Used to. Used to? Used to, yeah. Oh, used to. Well, now it's probably worse. Now it's probably like weird, creepy chemicals. So, like, I'm, just think about this, man. A little kid who lives in the city walks into their bodega corner store, whatever you want to call it, and says, I'm thirsty. And they look, and sure enough, what do they have to, to drink? They have little barrel juices, which is high fructose corn syrup, garbage, Coca-Cola garbage. They look at what, what do they have to eat? Ho-hos, ding-dongs, Twinkies, plastic. They put propylene glycol in muffins at gas stations. You know that is? Propylene glycol? It's antifreeze. Yeah. And uh, they'll argue, yeah, but propylene glycol is the safe. Ethylene glycol is the one that kills you. And I'm like, I don't want to eat antifreeze either way. Where you, when you live out in the middle of nowhere, you walk outside and there's a wild fruit and you're like, looks good to me. And you eat it. Now, I recommend downloading the app Picture This. You can scan a plant. And it will tell you if you actually can eat it or not. Yeah. Smart. So don't just go eat random yeah, plants. Random berries. But you course. can eat leaves, too. Mm -hmm. Crazy. I was reading about how to survive in the wilderness and how, how to know if you can eat leaves. And there's like this process to it. You take a leaf, you rip it in half, and you rub it on your skin, and then you wait 15 minutes. If nothing happens, then you take another leaf, you rip it in half, and you rub it on the side of your lip. And if nothing happens, you take another leaf, rip it in half, chew on it, spit it out, wait 15 minutes. Nothing happens. You take the leaf, rip it in half, chew on it, swallow it, wait 15 minutes. If nothing happens, congratulations, you can eat the leaf. But eat a little bit, you wait, and that's how you test it to see if it's going to have like poison or whatever. But you can actually eat leaves. Yeah. So, you know. Salads are scams. Just go straight for the beef liver. Get an animal, hunt it down, and uh, there's a reason wild animals always attack. And the first thing, the first uh, organ that they go after is the liver. Well, look, look, look. Where we live, we've got you know twenty some odd deer just running around all over the place. They live on our front lawn. It's crazy. It's a big you know ten acre property, and uh, they're just everywhere. But while I'm working and complaining about Democrats, the deer are eating things, growing, and making more of themselves. Yeah. So they're doing hard work every day to make sure there is food readily available for me when I choose to eat them. And me, I'm at home complaining about the Democrats. Yeah. I just Life that, is good. I just learned that Chick-fil-A sauce is not good for you. It's horrible. They <laughs> yeah. brought it in here, and I'm like, what are you doing? I yeah, but hungry. it tastes so uh, good. It's so convenient. It's right That's there. That's because it's, it's genetically engineered to hit the pleasure centers of your mind while it destroys your gut. It destroys your immune system. It destroys your health. It destroys your, your erectile function. It destroys everything. It's horrible for you, and it causes huge amounts of inflammation. Uh, Chick-fil-A, scam. So many scams out there. It, it, it's, it's bewildering. I, I made it uh, an issue to look at all the ingredients that are horrible for you. I made a crap list. Crap list is available for members of LukeUnfiltered.com. Print it out, put it on your phone, go to the supermarket, and then you just have to check. You have to look. You have to read every ingredient. It's going to take a long time, but you're going to be very happy you do this and you take charge of your health by First of all, being just a little bit conscious about what you put down your mouth you, hole. You know what's really I crazy? For, oh, go ahead. Just real quick. Uh, for the past several years, since, uh, 20, since 2014, the, basically the only thing I drink when I go to a restaurant is I order a club soda with a shot of lemon juice. Yeah, that's this, right? Yeah, and now these spin drifts are everywhere. Everybody's buying them, and it's literally just club soda with lemon juice in it. There's no sugar. And I'm like, how did that happen? It's like, 
this thing was becoming popular and everyone just started doing this is weird, you know? Do you have meal plans on your website? Uh, no, we're, we, ha uh, we actually have recipes um, that we're developing and working on as well that are, um, you know, healthy and, and better choices than, of course, what the average American is told to eat. Because if you listen to the to the FDA, if you look at the food pyramid, that's a whole nother scam within it, within a scam, what? within a scam of how just just absolutely Yo, it ridiculous. Says to, it's, it says to eat like most of your most of the food you should be eating is bread. Yeah. Yeah. It makes it, and it, the it makes FDA no classified a a pizza as a vegetable. Yes. Back in 2011, yes, I think that was in school. No, 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 no. The tomato sauce. Tomato sauce. They're yes. literally poisoning, poisoning you to make you slow, soft, more more gullible, and more of an idiot to go along with the programming what and the bullcrap that what, they have for what you. What I love about the pizza thing is that the, 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 uh, the argument was whether or not a slice of pizza contained a serving of vegetables. And so the media made the joke of they're arguing whether pizza's a vegetable. That's not what happened. It was like, it's got sauce on it. Does this count as a serving? And everyone's like, tomatoes, fruit, dude. Toma tomato is not a vegetable. Yeah. The argument's kind of irrelevant, I guess. But didn't they utilize that to get cheaper meals in school systems? Something like that. that uh, you could get your vegetable serving. But it should your... have been a serving of fruit. Yeah. Well, not a this. serving of vegetables. Yeah. Michelle Obama's war on chocolate milk was a disgrace. <laughs> And I don't care if it's bad for you. It tastes delicious, and every child has a right to chocolate. Nah, no, no. Can was you right confirm is chocolate She's milk right. bad? It is. Yes. 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 What if it's chocolate uh, raw milk? The chocolate in America is a lot different than chocolate in Europe. Yeah. And if you ask a European uh, how American chocolate tastes, they're usually disgusted by it because in I'm America, disgusted by it. There's a preservative in there that the government mandates a lot of the chocolate companies to put in there that is absolutely horrible. And uh, unless you're used to eating it, it tastes like crap. Look, you can get good chocolate. Chocolate, right? They give you the actual the, the cacao bean is broken up, and they I've, I went to this uh, uh, I went to a place where they make it. It was amazing, and they they take the little bits out. What are they called? Nibs? Yeah, cacao and, nibs. Yeah, and then they, they 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 pulverize it, break it down, melt it, and then you actually watch them like they mix sugar in and stuff. And so the dark chocolate is just the nibs melted down, and then uh, I don't know if they had anything to it. It's just like pure cacao or whatever. But then the problem with chocolate in this country is it's not really chocolate. It's like emulsifiers, you know, margarine. And like sugar, cocoa flavor and sugar. Yeah, it's not it's not real chocolate. So chocolate milk is typically what high fructose corn syrup and chocolate flavored high fructose corn syrup yep. mixed into milk. And the milk is pus filled bacteria garbage. Pus yeah. Filled. Yeah. One of the worst things that I realized was really hindering my health and I didn't realize it was really bad for me was oat milk and almond milk. I thought, yeah, they're they're nut milks. They must be great for me. And they're absolutely horrible, filled with high fructose corn syrup, filled with just a lot of glyphosate, a lot of horrible chemicals that disrupt your gut and cause you a lot of inflammation and a lot of damage, not just irritable bowel syndrome but more importantly there's a link between the gut and the brain and if you destroy your gut you're destroying your brain which could explain why so many american people are losing their minds and we have a mental health crisis here in the united states right now but again just to go back to what we were talking about from the beginning here every single choice every single decision you make yep. matters right now they're going after everyone they're going after mike lindell tucker carlson elon musk alex jones so it's it's more important than ever you listening right now Take charge of your life and start voting with your dollar consciously. Please. And exercise. Let's pull this story up from CNBC. We got this. They're coming after Elon Musk as well. SEC sues to force Elon Musk to testify in Twitter probe. They're saying that he didn't uh, he didn't comply with the subpoena to testify. He failed to appear on September 15th, 2023. The case is tied to Musk's purchase of Twitter last year and the stock trading surrounding the acquisition. This is the game. That's it. That's the news. If you in any way stand against this failing and corrupt establishment machine they will in desperation do everything they can to stop you but you know what i see with this this is pathetic this is sad back in the day we wouldn't get a story about them forcing someone to testify no one would dare defy them but you know what i've been saying it's like they have that saying that wealth only lasts three generations well the people who created the intelligence agencies and ran them and knew what it took to build them up have get, gave it to their kids and their kids' kids, and the kids' kids have no idea how to make the machine work, and yep. so it's falling apart. Good riddance. Well, and Elon, in his defense, claimed, hey, I've already testified numerous times about this acquisition. Not only that, it was probably the most scrutinized acquisition of a public company. Because anytime you're taking a public company private, 
I mean, the regulations to go through that process, especially when it's forty-four billion dollars, whatever it was, they are they are massive and monumental. And so this was already the most scrutinized uh, acquisition in modern history. He already has been under the spotlight for this. And what really frustrates me about all this is that the SEC is choosing to have Elon testify. Meanwhile, we still have stuff revealed that has not been dealt with from the Twitter files. So instead of actually handling the corruption that was exposed under the previous leadership of Twitter, they're wanting to subpoena the guy and sue the guy who actually is trying to bring all that into the light and do their jobs for them. The SEC is a regulatory invest or investigative body. They're supposed to be gatekeepers and accountability people for companies. And yet Elon actually did their job for them by investigating malfeasance that was happening in a public company. So I mean, it's just it, he's the good guy here and he's the one getting punished. For and he stopped the distribution of online child adult behavior on yep. the platform. When there was victims demanding Twitter take it down, Twitter knew there was adult content with children in, in very horrific, horrible ways. And they knew who it was. They had the person, they had the child coming to them saying, please take this down. And they refused. Elon Musk came in and then finally told people exactly what was going on. He's allowing people to speak freely. And that's the issue here. He's actually doing something good that allows people to find out what's really happening in this world. And therefore, he needs to be stopped. And I'm pretty sure the DOJ also opened an investigation into Tesla, was it? Yes. And like they're just harassing. Well, they're anybody. going after him for not hiring refugees, even though it's it's illegal to to hire people right. who are not American citizens for your company. It doesn't matter yeah. what they're going. They're just going after him. They're just going after Mike Linda. They're just going after Donald Trump. Why? Because they are all opponents of the current system, and it's a dangerous time. And the Newsweek article came out about how the FBI is going to be closely monitoring Trump allies and Trump supporters as we get closer to the 2024 election. They are trying to intimidate us. They are trying to break us. Uh, but I think the people are waking up. I think Joe, you know, Joe Rogan uh, was talking about the Mar-a-Lago evaluation today. He's like, these people aren't even trying to yeah. hide their you know, bullshit anymore. Like, they, they don't even care anymore. Um, but the American people, I think, are waking up. We need to continue to shed light on what's happening. And I think people like Elon is courageous. He's not going to back down. I think he's going to stand strong in, in the face of this. President Trump has obviously stood strong. Um, but it, it's sick, and we can't let this stand. And I think whoever becomes the next Speaker of the House needs to deliver on the promise of finally holding these people accountable. Yes. How? What are they going to do, though? Well, you could start with a subpoena. How many subpoenas were sent in, so far in nine months? Not not too many. Yeah. Um, and so bring people before Congress. The January 6th committee, I think it was a complete and total farce, but they subpoenaed a thousand mm -hmm. so-called witnesses. And in their 900-page report, only like nine people were mentioned. But they had a thousand witnesses. They harassed a thousand Trump allies just for the hell of it. Meanwhile, we actually have real things that we can be going after, and we've sent out like two subpoenas. And so we need to actually hold people accountable. And uh, I think we have people on the Judiciary Committee who want to get it done. We have people on Ways and Means and on um, Oversight that want to get it done, but we just need blessing from the top. And yeah. so um, we need to play by the rules that the January 6th Committee did. Well, well and we, you also we, we just need a Speaker Trump. There you go. That's a great idea. And, and if he flood the zone, like par part of the thing is the SEC doesn't actually think Elon would ever be guilty of any of this. They know this is all a sham. They know it's a joke. Just like they know Mike Lindell, nothing's going to turn up in the audits. He's a huge company that's audited every year. They do it because they want to distract you. If they can distract the founder of Tesla from his work, they're hoping they can throw you off course. Then Republicans, we claim civility, so we don't dare flood the zone when we actually have legitimate cases. So we could actually bring forth continual judgments, multiple, every single day against these corrupt actors, and we don't, because we stay civil, quote unquote. And uh, it's not a winning strategy. We actually have the case on our side. The truth is on our side. All of our arguments have the virtue of being true, and so while the SEC is more antagonistic and militant than we are, they have no legs to stand on, and the opposite is true for us. So that's got to change. This is the problem with Kevin McCarthy. It was once again slow down their Democrats. Kevin McCarthy was negotiating with them behind the backs of the Republicans. There was no point in there being a majority. What do we have if the establishment Republicans and the Democrats are the exact same thing? It's funny because the Democrats are like, here's what we overtly want. The Republicans are like, hey, all those things are really bad. 
All right, is nobody looking? Okay, let's go vote for those things we really want. So it's got to change. And, you know, I don't know if it ends up with Trump as a speaker. It'd be great. It'd be a dream come true. But I'll take obstruction over them doing the exact same thing they, you know, over and over and over again and nothing happening. Yeah. I, think, I think outside of that is the right for too long. I think one of the reasons we're seeing this change is Donald Trump lit up a bunch of people who normally did not vote and have a different worldview than your traditional conservative. Conservatives were always like, well, we must maintain decorum and play by the rules. And then Trump came in and was like, Rosie O'Donnell is a fat pig. And he didn't say it like that exactly. But all of a sudden, so decorum true, was on its head. And regular people who never voted before were all of a sudden finding themselves aligned with the Republicans. Republicans got pissed like, oh, well, I never. And so now you're seeing fighters. You're seeing people. I remember I was at an Occupy Wall Street march in Chicago. And it was like one of these ancillary, like, protests they were doing and they marched through uh south halstead and it was the funniest thing ever to see these south side irish guys just start punching these activists and it's like they, they these leftists had this idea that we're the working class and we are right and the actual working class white dudes in the south side of chicago were like you're the elite scumbags causing our problems get out of our neighborhood and they're like no we're here for you man and this dude just takes his shirt off and is like nope and i'm like well i certainly don't encourage that kind of stuff it is interesting to see these are the kind of people that I think Donald Trump actually woke up. Mm -hmm. These are the white working class who felt left behind. And as Michael Moore said, Trump was the human Molotov cocktail. They were going to lob into the system. So now what ends up happening is these people are voting for the likes of Matt Gates, and they're voting for other people like him. And they want aggression. They want someone to get into Congress and be more aggressive and more assertive and make demands. Yeah. Well, the establishment tried to primary Matt Gates this last cycle in, in 2022. <laughs> and... Uh, I, I, they they put a lot of money behind this guy. I think like two million bucks or something wow. like that. And Matt beat him eighty two to twenty or <laughs> eighty two to eighteen or something like that. It was no contest. Wow! But, like the establishment has so much money to just blow, trying to take the heads of our fighters, and that is why Republicans have such a hard time. Like Blake Masters, for example, was such a great. I thought. Yep really great guy and a great poss a great candidate but you spent so much money fighting him in the primary you had one establishment guy who put in like 20 million bucks to fight him in the primary and then the general comes around and blake masters is outspent three to one four to one carrie lake same situation 25 million dollars against carrie lake in a primary underfunding the general the way it's supposed to work is you vote for your republican who goes to congress and says we don't want you know these books in our schools and the leadership says, you got it. We'll ban it tomorrow. Just sign war funding. Funding for Ukraine, funding for Afghanistan. And they go, you got a bus. So th there are certain things that you must stand by. And then you can maybe get a little, a little morsel here and there. And so we've got a bunch of people go to Congress. And they're basically like peasants on their knees begging, may I have another crumb, sir, from the establishment elites who are like, I'll give you your crumb, but you must give me my billion dollars for bombs. And they go, yep, I don't want to fight. It's too scary. You know, so far in this Republican primary for president, there are both primaries, Democrat or Republican, the Democrats have spent $35 million on ads. And on the Republican side, $139 million has been spent. 125 of that or $120 million of that has been against Trump. And Trump is at 65% and everybody else is in single digits now. Wow. And so, and the voting doesn't start for three more months. And so we're going to continue the establishment donors are going to continue to light money on fire because they hate Trump. And then we're going to be severely underfunded come the general election because of the people's selfishness and the hatred of not just Trump, but the people that he brought into the party. And so the Democrats are just sitting back laughing at these jokers that are running. And, you know, the, the finances are actually incredibly important when it comes to elections. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, let's talk at what's at stake here from the Daily Mail. Putin threatens the West with total nuclear destruction, leaving no chance of survival in the event of a strike on Russia, as he warns his Satan II and flying Chernobyl missiles are ready for use in ranting anti-U.S. speech. Was it worth it? Is, 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 is Ukraine really worth this? We don't want Russia to have access to the Black Sea. We want to cut them off and take control of the, of the oil and gas. So we are risking war with a nuclear power. And all these people, they come on, they say, yeah, it's a good thing because Russia's been weakened. I don't, I, I, that's not a good thing. Mm -mm. If Russia is weakened to the point where they're scared, they have nukes. Do you want to back, like, okay, you see a rabbit, right? Not scary at all, huh? You back a rabbit into a corner. 
the amount of fear you have for that circumstance goes up just a little bit. Rabbit's still not the scariest thing in the world, but now that it's backed into a corner, it might actually try and attack you or bite you and scratch you, and then who knows, you can get rabies or something from, I don't know, rabbit's going to have rabies. But you don't want to do that, right? Maybe you don't care because you got to catch the rabbit. Vladimir Putin is a dude with a bunch of nuclear weapons, and they're like, let's back a guy with nukes into a corner to the point where he says, my only option is total annihilation. Mm -hmm. And this is the game you get when you get members of Congress who outright just say, we will cut deals to fund war so long as you give me my minor victories and make sure I don't get fired from my job. Yeah, this is uh, a, a, a very uh, crazy situation that a lot of people have been warning about. As, of course, the majority of people don't want war. No. The only people who vote for the war are the members of Congress that, in my opinion, should be going there and then fighting it. If you really want this yeah. war, go out there and fight it. The argument that Russia has been weakened is also being challenged by a lot of individuals who are bringing up the success of BRICS and the larger relationship that Russia now has with India, with China, with Saudi Arabia. And it's other energy distribution that now they're moving around the world, selling it to other countries who are now selling it back to Europe at a yeah. premium. So if you look at exactly what's happening here, this isn't just a, a devastation because of, of the possibility of a nuclear war. This is already devastation for the people of Ukraine that have started to draft women into the military. This is already a devastation for the world's poorest people since there's a food supply shortage. This is already a horrible situation for all the people in Europe who are poor because now their energy prices are going to be skyrocketing, especially if Europe has a dark winter, which they're expected to have, which of course will obliterate and destroy families' ability to live and survive as Germany is now going back on coal, of all things, which is just just r ridiculous. This conflict needs to be stopped. There needs to be detente. There needs to be negotiations. No side is going to get everything that they want, but at least we could stop the madness of human beings dying for politicians and oligarchs and corrupted individuals that take everything for themselves and don't give it back to anyone else. There's so many reports of frontline Ukrainian soldiers not having the proper gear. We're giving 200 plus million dollars a day to Ukraine, 200 plus million dollars every single day of your money is going over there. Where is it going to? Well, according to CBS News, only about 30% of that goes to the actual people. They retracted that, but according to some estimates, that looks like that's the actual number, which just so much corruption happening in that country as Zelensky just fired a lot of the key members of his defense ministry, which you never do during the middle of a war. Why did he do it? Well, we don't know. The, the, the official explanation has not been given to us, but I think it's pretty clear it has to deal with corruption at the highest levels of oligarchs coming in there, enriching themselves when sending some of their youngest, poorest people to go fight for their ambitions, which is stupid. Well, we know they want an endless war, but what's so ominous and dangerous about this is that when they wanted an endless war in Iraq, they used weapons of mass destruction as the pretext for it when we knew that that wasn't legitimate. Now it's interesting because they want they want an endless war against an adversary that actually does have weapons of mass destruction, verifiably, and we think that we run no risk of pushing them to the edge. It makes no sense. Like, we were fighting goat farmers in Afghanistan yeah. and Iraq. <laughs> now we're fighting... Putin is literally coming on here. I didn't sign up for this war. Did any of you want this war? Did Congress vote on this war? And what's nope. obnoxious is that Democrats came out after the speaker turnover, and now they're saying, we will not back anybody that does not prioritize Ukraine funding as one of the highest priorities. Not once did they mention a peace deal. Like, Zelensky comes to Congress. We could have said, dude, you do not step foot on American soil until your number one priority is a peace deal. No more aggression. Well, they had peace but, deals, but then the U.S. came in and sabotaged yeah. those peace deals. As of course, this is a banker war, and it's a—it's not only a, a forever war; it's a limited forever war. It's a Henry Kissinger doctrine that's being practiced right now, and we're reaching a point where you, the Ukrainians are running out of human beings. That's how sad. That's how tragic. That's how many lives were lost in this entire debacle, which shouldn't have happened in the first place. Yes, you could put some blame on Russia. Yes, put some blame on Ukraine and NATO. I don't care. Just stop. Stop with this stupid war. Stop with the bloodshed. Stop with the life loss. You're fighting over destroyed territories. You're fighting over politicians saying, I want to tax these people. That's essentially what this war is about, which is insane you know, what's and crazy stupid. is the person that was labeled the Russian puppet, President Trump, he was the only president that Vladimir Putin didn't invade another country under. Mm -hmm. You know, under Bush, it was Georgia. 
under Obama, it was Crimea. And under Biden, it's Ukraine now. President Trump... So Crimea is Ukraine. So Ukraine twice. Ukraine twice, right. But President Trump, he sanctioned the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. The first thing, one of the first things that Biden did was restart the Nord Stream 2 pipeline in Russia, empowered Russia, and then... Blew it up and caused one of the biggest exactly. national yeah. disasters exactly. so, in world history. But also, guy. I, I want to c- counter back a little bit on Donald Trump because his foreign policy with Ukraine also wasn't that good as he had a lot of State Department old heads coming in and he allowed them to pretty much do whatever they wanted to do. Trump uh, actually went further than Barack Obama was even willing to by sending lethal weapons to Ukraine. He set that very dangerous precedent, which led us to this current situation. He now currently is speaking up. He did say he would be the, the the president that stops the war immediately, which is why I think he's getting a lot of support. But also at the same time, he is saying the United States shouldn't be paying for this war. European countries need to be paying for this war. So there's a little bit of a conflicting message that I wish he would clear up and become more president on uh, and, and explain exactly how he would do all of this, because um, it, it, there's an easy way to do this. But I, I, I want Trump to at least explain it and make his stance more uh, solidified because he's kind of wavering a little bit in my opinion well i think president trump's track record when he was in office and the fact that there wasn't a war uh, speaks a ton of volume the no fact, new wars the fact that putin didn't move on ukraine we were ukraine. very close towards a war with iran and he did bomb syria according to his own son because ivanka trump cried to him about the syrian gas attacks which were false flag attacks which son um, I, I, I'll, hey, get, I'll get to the exact sources. Hey, listen, listen, yeah, yeah. listen yeah. baby. Trump's not perfect, but I, I mean, a, a strategy for withdrawal from from Syria, withdrawal from Afghanistan, which were botched, botched uh, by the way, the the State Department lying to the American people and Donald mm-hmm. Trump. But the Abraham Accords were good. His 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 efforts towards peace in North Korea was amazing. He worked on a lot of peace with no new wars. Serbia, Kosovo. The North Korea stuff was great. But yep. then he brought in Bolton that came in and said that North Korea is following the Libyan model, which really <laughs> pissed off North Korea and then destroyed any kind and of I'm peace talks saying, and negotiations. I, I don't think we're going to get this libertarian dream of a president who's going to come in and solve everything overnight. Of course not. But it of is undeniable not. that Donald Trump's foreign policy was actually good com- based on the situation that we are in. Well, and he listened to intelligence too much. He's got to trust his guests. Yes. I mean, when intelligence lies to him blatantly about what's happening on the ground in Afghanistan in order to halt a withdrawal that they then botched a year later, you know, I, it, our intelligence Evil. operation in the United States was behind all this. You know, he gets briefed every morning by the intelligence apparatus that sits in a room and says, Mr. President, if you move the embassy to Jerusalem, there will be nuclear war from Iran. He said, nah, not going to listen. Did it. No nuclear war. Peace. And when he would trust his gut and actually not listen to John Bolton's of the world, there was a natural inclination toward peace because I think that's uh, who the guy is. I mean, honestly, he truthed, what was it, a month ago? I just want all the dying to stop. Like, I just, I I, I want dying to stop on both sides. I'll be honest. I I think out of all the candidates, I think Vivek has one of the best kind of foreign policies out there. But second to him, I will admit it is Donald Trump because he's still one of the few people willing out, willing to to have an anti-war kind of sentiment, which is rare. And when you look at the entire Republican ticket, DeSantis doesn't want to talk about Ukraine. He doesn't give any answers about what he would do in Ukraine. He flip-flops on it a lot, and it's very concerning to see so many neoconservatives kind of align with him as well. So I, I would say, you know, Donald Trump, again, not perfect. I think he does deserve to be criticized on some of his foreign po- policy. But out of what we have, I think he's one of the best. Well, did you watch the Bill O'Reilly Tucker Carlson interview? Uh, no, I didn't. So Bill O'Reilly disclosed something that I wasn't aware of, or a lot of people weren't aware of, but he was involved in a conversation with President Trump talking about designating the drug cartels as um, uh, as a terrorist organization. And he was super close to doing it. And he got like legal authority and all these people in. He had the military in. And Bill O'Reilly was also in these conversations, according to his, his testimony to Tucker. And, you know, so President Trump calls up the president of Mexico and he says, I'm going to designate the cartels as a terrorist organization and we're going to go take them out. And the president says, please don't do that. We're going to have, that's going to cause serious problems for me. And so the president of Mexico and then Trump, they end up striking a deal where Mexico sends their troops to the border 
at both the northern border to our country and also to the southern countries to prevent and illegal migration was down 80 percent because of this deal and so he did not end up going through with designating them as a terrorist organization he looked at it as a negotiation tactic and he got 80 percent of illegal migration to stop because of that that deal and so uh he doesn't want to disclose what his plan would be with Putin and Zelensky, but he does have personal relationships with both of them. There was not a conflict when he was president. And so when he says, I am the guy that has the ability to end this war, I believe him. I hope so. I, um, I, I do agree as well. I think, I think the day they announce Trump's the winner, before he's even president, the fighting stops. Yeah, I mean, I, I still can't get over the fact that he met with Kim Jong-un. I mean, that, that alone. Like, it was going places. It, 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 it could have been like, great. And, that, let me, yeah. and let me let me clarify. He didn't just meet with Kim Jong-un. Donald Trump crossed into an enemy yeah. nation with no security detail yeah. in, a, in a show of good faith and peace with their, with their leader. Yeah. The media attacked him for it. This move nearly brought tears to my eyes. I was like, Donald Trump is a brave MFer. <laughs> I mean, look, he's holding the cards. He's like, North Korea is not going to attack me. They're not going to kidnap me. Yeah. But what president is going to be like, security, stand back. I am now going to be under the jurisdiction of an enemy nation because I want them to understand peace. We're serious about it. They insult him for it. Yeah. And I was, I, was, I was talking to some, I was hanging out. At a, uh, this was at, I think it was at Seminole last time we were here in, uh, in Florida at the Hard Rock playing poker. And uh, it, it came, the politics came up. And then some guy made a crack about Donald Trump supporters and then someone laughed and they pointed to me and they were like, this guy likes Trump. And I was like, yeah, he's pretty good. I'd vote for him. And then he's like, you don't, the other guy goes, you don't seriously mean that, do you? And I was like, yeah, I do. And he goes, why? And I was like, oh boy, foreign policy, no new wars, withdraw strategies from Syria and Afghanistan. I grew up in a time when we were mad about that stuff. And then I said, but honestly, you know, for me, with my family history, seeing him make the effort to bring peace to the Korean Peninsula was, was inspirational. And the fact that he crossed the DMZ with no security detail nearly brought tears to my eyes. And he goes, that never happened. And I'm like, you live in crackpot Wally world all day and night, dude. If you want to hate the man that bad, by all means, go ahead and do so. But I'm like, and then someone else, the guy to my left, he goes, that really happened? And I took up my phone and I played the video. I'm like, there's a video of Donald Trump crossing the demilitarized zone in North Korea into North Korea with the North Korean dictator and his military with no security detail because he said, I am serious about peace with you. Well, right after President Trump won in 16, he met with Obama and Obama said, you know, President Trump, what's our biggest threat? Obama said North Korea, World War III started by North Korea. And President Trump kept that in the back of his mind, his entire presidency. He's like, I'm going to accomplish this goal. I'm going to bring peace. And he did so with tremendous pushback. And, you know, now... Did, did he bring peace well, to not, North Korea? Well, it didn't, it didn't last. But like well, he, John he, Bolton, his own member that he appointed, ruined it uh, epically yeah. and really pushed North Korea away. Yeah, I don't think John Mistake. Bolton's coming back in, yeah. in, <laughs> I hope, uh, in round two. It, 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 we're living in a crazy world. I hope yeah. not. But, but who, 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 who knows? Who would you like to see? But, but, there, but there, was a war, there was a war in East Ukraine um, uh, during his presidency. There was limited fighting. Tulsi Gabbard, I'm critical of everyone. I'm sorry. A, a lot of people are like, you know, call me out in the chat here it's fine but I'm, I'm critical of everyone including Tulsi Gabbard who's a member of the Council on Foreign Relations so uh, I, I think and also endorsed Joe Biden by the way so so I think point. yeah I, I think we we have to have a, a level of realism here and and critique here that's um, not emotional but based off real conversations that could check our ourselves our power our side and be able to uh, have real conversations that could say hey I, I don't agree with this I think we could do better because I think we can't well, do better who's somebody that you'd like to see as a national security advisor um michael not, malice not john bolton definitely Jeff, definitely not, not, not him but there's a lot of um there's a lot of very uh, interesting individuals uh, i think it was general um mccormick um and uh, general mcgregor that i that i think would be uh, that, that would be pretty good um I, I could give you a full list of names but i would have to look into my kind of role yeah. decks of individuals that i listen to uh, personally i think mcgregor's phenomenal yeah i think mcgregor would be would be really good in that situation and has yeah. a realistic sense of, of what's really going on have and you doesn't had him bull crap people i don't know I, I don't think so but no. he would be great he would be great to have on the well, show. well everybody we're gonna go to super chats so if you haven't already smash that like button subscribe to this channel send in your super chats we're going to be reading your questions and head over to timcast.com for that members only uncensored show coming up in about 27 minutes all right clint torres with the first super chat saying howdy people howdy howdy thanks for the super chat rj mcdougalheim says laid off because of the economy they took my gerb thanks joe biden yo 
look, COVID was messed up. You can blame, you can, COVID was under Trump, it was under Biden. So I'll just say moot point, but 2019 under Trump, ain't nobody was complaining. Also, check out Red Balloon. Go to redballoon.work, great partner of ours. Largest non-woke job board in the country. Nice. They're awesome. Yep. Very cool. Highly recommend. Let's see, we got Raymond G. Stanley Jr. says, Tim, mad folks in my feeds will be in Miami tomorrow. It's going to be great getting all of our folks together. I call dibs on ding-dong ditching Ron DeSucks. No, no, nobody <laughs> ding-dong ditch. I like DeSantis. I just don't like his campaign. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's just apocalyptic. You know, there, there, I saw a video that was retweeted earlier. Uh, Dave Rubin retweeted it. And it, it's, it's a good video. It's Ron DeSantis talking about all the things they got done. It's not insulting Trump. It's not, it's not you know, telling everybody bad things about other people. It's a video talking about the good things he did. And I'm like, it's so great, all the things he did. So why do the prediction markets have him under Nikki Haley? Whatever you look at in terms of his policy, policy does not win you elections. It is inspirational and we like it. But if you don't have all these other characteristics, and namely charisma, I am not spe speaking right now specifically about uh, DeSantis' capabilities. I'm saying charisma is the trait your campaign needs. And the DeSantis campaign, their charisma is zero. It's not just that DeSantis comes off a little stodgy. He can improve on that, and he has tremendously, and I respect it. But it's that the people he's hired to run his campaign lack influence and charisma and just don't get it. And, what they, they, you know, I heard from people on Twitter. They said, uh, they responded to me saying, it's kind of obvious. Anybody who's worth their salt in, in influence and charisma is behind Donald Trump. So if you're trying to run a campaign and you're trying to hire people, Unless you have that X factor, Vivek has it. Unless you have that, you're hiring the B team. You're hiring the people that Trump didn't want. And all the good people are working for the campaign they think he's going to win. Or they're just behind it. I mean, if we want to be real, the idea for, of people acting like Ron DeSantis still has a shot. You know, look, there's always, there's always a possibility he could turn things around and we're a year away. So that's an eternity. But when the prediction market's take you from the front runner to underneath Nikki Haley, what that means is confidence among people in politics for your candidacy is gone. And fourth place is Youngkin, who's not even running. To be fair, Vivek is now in fifth place in, the, in, in Predict It, so he's not doing too well either. You hate to see it. It is what it is. I mean, I'll say this. I, I don't think there Vivek's is one win. person with influence who is behind Ron DeSantis, and his name's Bill Mitchell. And he's a great guy. Sure. And he's not an aging lesbian. I want to make it very clear. <laughs> well, it's his guy. own. It's it, to, to be fair, you know, he's the one who said it. Yeah, that's and, not in your words. That's and his. then, you know, that's, that's, I, I just think, you know, he, it was really funny, though. He, he said it, and then he goes, as soon as I said it, I realized they were going to clip it. And I'm like, well, yeah, you know, that's yeah. what you get. But all right, let's read yeah. some more. Shane H. Wilder says the Biden admin allowing construction of the border wall, ah, the fall, Leaves are turning. White girls are buying pumpkin spice lattes. You can almost smell the election season in the air. Well, we're a year away, but yes. Yeah, but, uh, you know, Casper.com has pumpkin spice all year round. So. Hey. Congressman Troy Nell says, just had a great conversation with President Trump about the speaker's race. He, <laughs> nice. is, he is endorsing Jim Jordan. Uh, no. And I believe Congress should listen to the leader of our party. Sean Hannity also said something similar. So I don't know if that's true, but that's two people saying that. And So uh, Troy Nails is going to endorse Jim Jordan. He was the one who was saying he was nominating Trump. Yeah. I bet Trump said, come on, you know. Yeah. Man, we, is, we, why can't we have nice things? It was things? a fun theory while it lasted. <laughs> theory? It's a dream. It is a dream. It is a vision. I, I'm, I, you know, how do we, how do we, do we have to pray? Like, who do we contact who runs reality? <laughs> Because we got a spirit cook, Tim. We got to get a, a Brina Abrovamich, and we got to write messages to demons with our. She's too busy our working for Ukraine. Yeah. DM, you got you to take enough DMT to break the veil, and then yeah. meet the machine elves and ask them if they can influence this to make Donald Trump speaker. Okay, fine. I'm satisfied with President Trump in 2020, uh, 2025. So we'll, we'll we'll take it. We'll take it. All right, all right. Beagle Cake says excited for the event. Watching the show while I wait for boarding right now. Can't wait to meet you guys. You guys are a big inspiration. It's going to be a wild night. And uh, I hope everybody understands. We're doing the elite members meetup at 3 p.m., which I think is going to be around 50 or so people will be at this, this very private elite members only uh, event. And we're going to eat. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, uh, there's going to be a lot of great people there. We, m maybe even some of our guests. I'm not entirely sure who will, who's, who's planning on showing up. But I think we've got like, we probably have like 35 guests 
you know, like friends of the show and prominent individuals you're fans of who are going to be there. It's going to be amazing. And uh, there's go- it, it's 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 nearly a thousand person theater. So for everybody who's attending, definitely, I'm going to try my best to shake as many hands and meet as many people as possible. But you know, sad reality of life is I don't know how much. You know, 10 seconds for you, but like three hours for me. So I'll do my best. I'm really excited and really grateful that y'all are coming. And then, of course, we got everybody else who's going to be there, too. So it's going to be really I'm really excited because I'm pretty sure y'all are going to meet Alex Stein because I'm I'm fairly certain Alex Stein will run out into the crowd and, and yell and shake everyone's hands and, and film it. And it will be amazing. And I'm I'm really excited. Yeah, he's going to be doing stand up right before and then introduce all of us. It's going to be amazing. Jason Dixon says, Tim, can you please shout out the discord again? Thank you for everything. That's right. When you're a member, you can download Discord, which is a, it's like a chat room. You can hang out. You become, a, uh, as a member, you get access to the TimCast Discord. You can submit questions, call into our Uncensored show, but also there's tons of people hosting their own conversations, their own shows, working on projects, making music, building culture. It's really, really awesome. So you guys should definitely check that out. Because after we wrap the Uncensored show, they keep the show going with their own conversation. It's amazing. Here we go. Bo says, we just had our local elections here in Fairbanks, Alaska. I spent days trying to get the vote out, but we ended up losing six to nine seats. We're a really conservative city, but people just get too complacent in off-year elections. That is true. That's why I think 2024 is going to be very strange. I don't know that Republicans sweep and win everything. The polls are looking good for Republicans, but look, a lot of people don't care. A lot of people like Trump, and when they vote for Trump, they vote for everybody else. That's why, Repub- like in 2018, we saw this. Trump brought the energy. Republicans didn't have it. If Trump's not on the ticket, everybody else hurts for it. Raymond G. Stanley Jr. once again says, I don't know, Tim, first scripted with Poso and the continued excellent timing of guests the last couple of years. Did Timcast News shadow write the Newsweek article? You know, it is really funny that um, every so often, like we book, a, we book a guest who is the perfect guest for like a, a news story. It'd be really weird, you know, like, uh, for example, we planned this event a long time ago. We asked Matt Gates if he'd want to be here. It's in Florida. And he says yes. And now he's probably the most important politician in the country. To talk to right and now. And like yeah. three days later, he's going to be on stage with us. And I'm just like, thank you, Matt Gates, for the work you're doing in D.C. and coming to our event. This is going to be incredible. I almost couldn't believe it. I'm like, dude, he's, it's what, something's going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, the, and, and the funny thing is he's actually trying to stay in D.C. to get the job done. And they called a recess and he complained. He's like, no, we should stay here and we should vote. And I'm like, no, don't come down. <laughs> like, no, he should, he should definitely do the work, but I'm really excited that we're going to have uh, Matt down here. Matt brings Amazing. the fire, man. Yeah. He's, 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 he's a great speaker and the people love him. Like there's, you know, I'm around top politicians, but there's a few that actually just energize a crowd and connect with an audience. Trump's obviously one of that. Matt Gates is cut from the same cloth. He's Here's, a fighter. Here, and, th- and that's the secret. See, everyone keeps saying Matt Gates for governor, and they're like, no, it's not true. And they're saying maybe he wants to run for Senate. No, it's not. He's VP. I mean, like a, like a Billy. Trump Gates 2024. Like a Billy is important. And you're seeing that with a lot of the 2024 primary challengers of Trump. They're just not likable. And when you're against this most charismatic, likable guy, you know, it's you can't compete. I wonder, is, is there a possibility of, I, 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 I guarantee that if, if Matt Gates were here and I said, do you want to be VP? He'd say, absolutely not. I am fighting for, for, you know, to make these changes in Congress. But I wonder about the possibilities of Trump asking Matt. Well, you know, for constitutional purposes, you know, there's rhinos that are threatening to expel Matt Gates, right? Oof. So if you expel Matt Gates and Matt moves to Arizona, and then Trump, <laughs> and then Trump picks him for VP. Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, I do kind of think like Matt would be the best choice as of right now. But it's obvious because he's got all this energy behind him. Can they be from the same state? Yes. Okay. It's a misconception. Well, it's argued, but I'm pretty sure everything we've pulled up has said you you can be from the same state. And there's something else pertaining to it. I don't know. Just not when you get sworn in, I believe. Is that what it is? Yeah, there are restrictions about, like, if you're actively in office. Yeah. When you run and both in office from a state. Mm. I don't know. Maybe. Michael says Biden Harris get reelected if Trump is speaker. Biden Harris get impeached. Trump is now president. God, that would be what so a, amazing. Know. This is a missed opportunity. That's a way to to the White House. Yeah. You know what bothers me is that whoever is writing the simulation is keeping it boring. It's like, dude, come on. The people want to be entertained. You know, we're here. You know, we're living. We want entertainment. We want Speaker Trump. But what if Jim Jordan gave Trump an office in the speaker's? <laughs> no, not the same. 
Nah, yeah, it, it would be funny though if Patrick McHenry was like that. That office we just vacated to Pelosi's, we're giving to Trump, because then, then then it just shows he only did it to to insult Nancy Pelosi. I well, I, th- I think that office is for this. If there's a Speaker of the House that remains in office, like it's like it's for like this the the preceding former. yeah the former speaker yeah they get that office. so now mccarthy is the former yeah. speaker so yeah. he gets that right office. so is that why he did it yeah so it yeah. wasn't mchenry being like look look at mchenry man he small man wears a bow tie the guy doesn't got swag he was just following procedure but that gavel hit though oh is that how hard he's my thing I was like, <laughs> dude, he checked the thing after to make sure it was still <laughs> together amazing where are we at let's grab some more super chats the Exodus conservative says allegedly Trump can't be uh, can't can't because he's currently under indictment, and there is a rule that says you can't be speaker and be under indictment. Source: Brian Tyler Cohen couldn't find the rule. Can you fact check? There is a rule, is my understanding, but it's a it's a Republican rule. It's not it's not a, a law. It's literally like the dress code. They were like, okay, Fetterman, you can wear shorts, and then they were like, mm, actually, we changed your mind, no shorts again. So they could literally just be like, uh, okay, Trump can you don't need it doesn't, indictment doesn't matter. You're speaker. There you go. Have you seen John Fetterman's? Twitter game recently? No. Whoever he gave his Twitter passcode to probably deserves a raise. Oh, they're doing good? A lot of viral tweets. Well. A lot of viral tweets, a lot of good trolling on there. So, game recognizes game. and uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a PR marketing organization yeah. Yeah. with a whole bunch of... Uh, it's, you like, know, it's the guy who used to run Wendy's. 100%. What do we got here? Matt H. says, the person I, lear- uh, I heard this from was either Ann Coulter... Or the Crowder guest today, pretty sure it was the Crowder guest. Uh, what is Matt referring to? Is there a different super chat? Was that the one? Uh, I don't know what you're referring to. Oh, there you go. I've heard someone who's being indicted. Yes, right. It's about the indictment, right. Yeah, so there's articles about that, but they all basically say Republicans just change the rule. It's like, it's meaningless. Radioactive Rat says, if I want the goodie bag, but I'm unable to attend the event, could I purchase the ticket and pay for shipping to have it shipped to me? Well, technically, yes. Cool. I guess the issue is, I don't know how we would do it you know so or maybe you could go on publicsquare.com there you go Public and find other businesses and goodies that you want from publicsquare.com how hard would it be to like make the bags and list them on public square not hard at all in fact uh yeah let's talk after this but e- if you want a goodie bag from the event tomorrow email us at support at public sq.com you're gonna make Bang. you're gonna have a lot yeah. of emails why yeah. not just make something on your store on the front page that's saying, what this we'll is the do goodie bag we're gonna that's sell so awesome let's just do that that's a great yeah. idea. That way yeah. anybody can actually get it. All right. Well, then I think we, we, yeah. we got to. So after tomorrow night, check, go to the Public Square app or go to publicsq.com. We'll have on the featured page basically the Tim Cast special, and it'll have some of our favorites from tomorrow Dude, night. This is amazing. Bags. And now, we'll put some We Are King like supplements it. in there too, Let's right? Let's go. We, these are special order bags and stuff, which means we'll, we, if, if people are buying them, we'll order them. And this is, this is great. It's a sample pack of all these different companies. There's like jerky in there. There's coffee. There's a bunch of stuff. It's going to be fantastic. Love it. All right. Check Public Square tomorrow. Anytime, probably after. Give us to like 3 p.m. and we'll put up a featured tile and highlight the Timcast special. Yeah, and you don't have to buy a ticket to an event you're not going to. You no, just, just enjoy the, the products. That's exactly yeah. right. That'd be fantastic. Right on. All right, we'll grab some more Super Chats. Drew, outstanding in his field, says, Michael, could Public Square ever have a startup business toolkit feature? Basics to help launch a venture. CPAs, lawyers, marketing, videographers, editors, sales, etc. in one spot. Might help entrepreneurs launch faster. So this is an amazing question. We actually today soft launched a tool called PSQ Link. So if you go to PSQLink.com, it's a business management tool that's going to compete against Salesforce for small businesses so wow. that you can grow your business. Super excited. Salesforce, by the way, Mark Benioff called himself the most anti-conservative CEO in the country. Wow. He's actively canceled Project Veritas when they were under James O'Keefe. Uh, he has lambasted any conservative cause. He actually funded the uh, one of the lawsuits into Trump, yep. which was insane. So that's who runs Salesforce. It's a total corrupt Look. organization. My, my thing about these guys is I understand you like stepping in feces and living in cities of squalor and disgust, but the rest of us don't. So don't make it bad for the rest of us. Yep. Hey, we're not coming to San Francisco and cleaning up your poop. We know you like it. So don't come to our places and bring poop. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Head to psqlink.com. Check out the tool. It's pretty exciting. And, uh, you know, a lot of, by the way, like gun companies, ammo companies are not allowed to work with people like Salesforce. Uh, They make it really hard on them. And, uh, you know, it depends on your industry. But a lot of times these CRM tools won't touch you. So we've created a CRM tool that would love to serve America's small business community. The other thing I will say is that something that is actively in the works at Public Square, share your feedback with us on if you would actually find this valuable at support at publicsq.com. We're thinking about doing a Public Square Shark Tank 
where we actually have a lot of prominent investors from the parallel economy hear pitches from America's parallel economy businesses that are looking access we, to capital. We had talked about this on the show. Let's do it. About how, uh, so we, 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 we've been planning this thing where we basically will just give someone a gift of 10 grand every month. And we're trying to figure out how to do it. I know we, we, so I'll just put it this way. There has been some stuff where I've given out money, but it's just private because then it's, it's a legal gift. And the challenge is if we're giving away money, there's a lot of laws and regulations that kind of jammed us up. And so some people had the idea of like, why don't you do like a, a Shark Tank style thing where you give seed money to help people launch their projects. You guys doing it would be amazing. And uh, well, do we have an investor? What's up? Yeah, let's investor? go. You got to be on the panel. Then that's we'll, looking at we'll investing in the business. Absolutely. <laughs> I well, mean, I, I will tell you. Know, you. I mean, I got to be honest. I'll just, I'm going to bang the gavel for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be I like, love it. I mean, look, you know, if you need $200,000 out of business, I'm going to be like, yeah, I can't do that. But if it's just like, you know, $10,000 and depending on how many people are there, you know, 10 people or whatever, I'm just like, I don't care. Like, man, we got to see this stuff. We, it's a shotgun blast into seed projects. Yep. If we were able to fund as many people as possible with, 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 with money to start a business, to start music, to start culture, to make cartoons, to make shows, to make cookies, to make whatever, what happens is some people make it, some people don't. It's a sad reality. But we, then we have more seeds being planted, as many as possible. So that was the general idea. It's been rather hard for us, but we have been doing, um, up until we started doing promo for the event, is that Fridays... Instead of reading an ad, we shout out one of our members. Oh, cool! So their companies and stuff like that. So yeah, we've had a lot of great, a lot of great members run companies. Uh, one of our designers just texted me and said, "So I just got assigned work via YouTube for the featured page tomorrow for the Tim Cast." Uh, so we we've got our our product designer Katie watching, and uh, she's already on it building out the Tim Cast uh, nice. goodie bag for tomorrow nice. on the site. So go to publicsq.com. I like the Shark Take idea. I'd be Let's do happy it. to be an investor as well. So. That'd be amazing. I think we could have some fun. I talk to founders all the time that said, hey, Sequoia Capital's not calling me. Like, the venture capital's not calling me. Private equity's not calling me. They don't like my values. I don't have an ESG score. Nope. And they want access to solid investors that are values aligned with them. And then I also hear on the other side, these investors that are tired of ESG-dominated, meritocracy-ridden uh, investment opportunities, they actually want businesses that'll focus on quality products, excellent service, providing value in an honest way, not worried about woke politics. And so, given that we we have the supply on the both sides. It would be really fun to put on this production. I, where think, I think Luke would be a funny investor. I mean, because they'd be like, you know, we're only no seed oils. beef liver, yeah. no seed oils, beef liver. <laughs> Uh, I'm in, 100% well, so I'm I'm all in. You know, so I was like, what, what's going to happen is there's going to be some little old lady and she's like, I, I make cakes. And then he's going to be like, is there beef liver in them? No, put beef liver in them. <laughs> and, and then you got, you, <laughs> <laughs> you got a deal. You got a deal. Yeah, Luke, seriously, that would happen. Grandma Mary's yeah. beef liver cakes, and then it becomes like a multi-million dollar business. Yeah, I mean, they have beef liver. They had beef liver uh, smoothies at R1 that were incredible, but they just stopped running them. They were really good. They were actually really good, um, and they don't have them anymore because uh, they came. I can't. I don't beef like liver shakes, and it tasted like blueberries. Oh, it was so good. I don't like liver. It tasted Ugh. so good. Ugh. I don't like liver, the best. man. You don't have to. There's there's different ways you could consume it without actually tasting it. So, uh, but it is very good for your health. All right, we'll grab some more super chats. Raybert G. Stanbert Jr. says, "I feel like TDS on both sides of the aisle would keep him from the speaker, uh, the speaker, the speakerphone. But if he did, his campaign would run on getting it done, getting ish done. Yeah. We got uh, Ryan." Grissaf says, why stop with Joe Biden? How many other government agencies could he go after and start impeachment investigations for? Let the revenge start now. Trump for speaker. Man. Yeah, I think I think he might be better off as speaker getting revenge than he would be uh, in, in, in the White House. Depending, you know, because and, and, and that's why a temporary position makes so much sense. He's, he basically just says, I'm bringing to the floor all the bills that are going to investigate the FBI, special counsel investigation of Hillary Clinton, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, if you have a speaker like Jim Jordan that is willing and able to work with a President Trump in 2025, then you're going to have tremendous success. I mean, when he was president, he had Paul Ryan for the first two years and then Nancy Pelosi. So we didn't really have a friendly speaker at any point. And so if Jim Jordan is successful in getting the speakers He's getting the speakership, then he will have true ability to get retribution from Congress as, all, as well as the Oval Office. Right on. We'll grab some more. We got uh, Rhiannon Thunel. I just added my business to Public Square. Hey. I make handmade glass art, and my business name is Ethereal Avs Art. 
And Tim, I make glass chickens. Buck, buck. That's fantastic. Nice. Like Let's chickens. go. Yeah, I think the map is the is the most powerful thing. Yeah, it's fun. Cause it's cool too because people get to check in every few days, every few weeks, and just watch more and more pins expand on their it's, platform. It's it's, cool. it's it was crazy for us to just like pull up and be like, oh look at this. Let's go check that out. Like we're bored. You know what I mean? That's the crazy thing is uh, uh, we're looking for things to do, and it's like, what if we not? We've done everything here, and so we, we're traveling in greater greater distances outside of our area. We pull up the app, and we're like, oh, there's a barbecue place nearby, and they're on Public Square. Let's let's go. We we went there and we got food. Uh, someone others others have asked if you have um, services like. Oh yeah, carpenters, electricians, lawn care, all that stuff. That's that's huge because for us, especially with all the work we're doing, we're constantly trying to find contractors of you know varying types. You just pull up the, the public square app, and you can you know you're getting someone good. You that's also exactly right. somebody like you. You also want to trust who's coming into your home. Yep. Yeah. You know, I was talking to, to Marjorie Taylor Green actually about this. She was like, I have a hard time. I travel the country. I don't know where I can be comfortable having a meal, and so pull up public square and she's like that's what she does now yep and so it's a place that people that are a little bit more notable They're, to feel safe as well you know you know what you know what does not feel safe is when you see a business flying one of those cult flags yeah and with the creepy symbols on it and i'm like the problem is these people have advocated for extreme violence against anyone who doesn't align with them mm -hmm. whether you're actually far right or not and then these people complain about american flags you download public square Marjorie Taylor Greene, when she goes to a restaurant now, they probably give her a high five. Absolutely. Yep. You know, now she knows. She not, not, not only are they, is, she gonna get, is she not going to get spit in her food, they're actually going to make it better. Yep. They're going to be like, we're going to give her the good food. Well, this I happened mean, earlier like this year. Plebs. You When y'all went to dinner, it was Don Jr., Nigel Farage, this whole incredible table, like 20 people, right, for yep. Kimberly's birthday. Matt Gates was there. Yeah, Matt Gates was there. And Daily Mail actually wrote an article about it because <laughs> they went to a restaurant on Public Square and the owner loved them and invited them in and all this stuff. And it's like, where else could you have yeah. that crowd? be welcomed in a restaurant like that. It was the, pretty cool. The owner was telling Don that the first time he met his dad was like in 1996 when he came <laughs> to testify for like a real estate uh, wow. hearing before Congress. And so, um, you know, for, for people like that, it's a really, it's really important for them. And, um, you know, I think the contractors, like I'm down in Palm Beach, West Palm Beach, and pull up my phone, there's orthodontists, there's you know, uh, plumbers, there's electricians, there's every industry you can think of uh, all on the app that you can use. And so um, it's been an awesome feature. And I agree with the map. I look every couple of days, new businesses, new businesses, new businesses, and it's an exciting movement. We just moved to West Palm Beach like a month ago from San Diego. And uh, we have an 11 month old daughter and I'm, you know, just cautious of the medical system. Um, I know there are still some, you know, really great people in that system, but the last few years have just really burned, I think, a lot of us. And so I'm looking for a pediatrician that we can trust. So we go on the app, we find our new pediatrician. She makes house calls. She's a licensed MD who left to create her own natural and holistic practice. She starts there. She focuses on preventative health. I mean, it's just amazing stuff. And uh, to have that interaction, I fully trust her to come into our house and take care of our daughter. It's like I wouldn't find that anywhere else. The other exciting thing is in the next 30 days, look out for November 1 we are launching fully integrated e-commerce. So the ability to transact right there on the app, one shopping cart, multiple Ooh. vendors. We're also removing the account wall. So you no longer have to sign in or log in to browse. That's really exciting. Fully revamped desktop experience, whole new search. November one is going to be really exciting. So stay tuned at public. We'll just start ordering all of our snacks directly through the one-stop shop of public square. We Anthem we, snacks, right? Didn't you order it? Some Anthem snacks. Are, they last were, time? They're gone. Love it. They're gone. You ordered a lot of beef jerky. Uh, we did. That's and it's a good all sign. gone. That's and good. I was like, the past couple of weeks, I'm like, where's the jerky? And like, I go, I go down to the storeroom and I'm like, am I not seeing it? Like, annihilated. Love Is it. the jerky Luke approved? I haven't checked it. Well, I think it's clean, right? It is. I, it haven't, is. I, I haven't had it. And you got carnivore snacks. That's literally just meat. Carnivore and salt. snacks is good. Yeah, it is a. Pack. And Luke's got yeah. carnivore snacks. The Anthem yep. stuff has brown sugar in it, but the ingredients mm. are good. So Luke may not be a big fan of the sugar. I'm not as big a fan of the sugar, but Anthem also has a sugar-free. It's like salt pepper jerky. Legit. Yeah, super Let's good. Go. Shout out. Yeah, Anthem. and then there's also um. Who is the um uh, uh uh man? I'm forgetting. What was that jerky that we had that we just annihilated the whole bag? I feel bad. I forgot the name of their it's jerky. Like that American made one. I forgot what it's called. Yeah, uh, I know you're talking about. Bra that's like brave. No, it's not brave. It's an A though. Alpha or something like that. Was it Alpha Jerky? I think it was think Alpha, it's Jerky. Alpha Jerky. I'm is pretty it? sure it's Alpha Jerky. Yeah, almost positive. Is that what it is? They got to get on Public Alpha Square if they're not already. And then you'll have like 27 different jerky yeah, we companies. Got a lot of beef jerky companies. I love it. I mean, dude, we like beef jerky. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it was Alpha Jerky, wasn't it? Sure it is. Yeah. My brain's saying Alpha Jerky. I'm pulling it up. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. Yep. Wait, is it? It I says, think so. I'll use the moment right now to say, yeah, sorry, I was wrong about the strawberry flavor. It's actually vanilla what's their with the beaver butt thing or whatever. Anyways. Alpha jerky. Alpha it, jerky, It yeah. was alpha jerky? Yeah, it's, I'm pretty sure it's alpha jerky. I'm almost, almost I positive. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's an A something, though. Yeah, alpha jerky. Yeah. They're on the, they're on the app? Yeah, quality handmade there beef jerky. Oh, oh, perfect. Ten flavors to choose from. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Good, Good stuff. Brad. All right, All we'll right. grab uh, we'll grab a couple more uh, super chats right here. Yeah, we had a bag of it. We just ate the whole thing. All right. Jason Rink says, I'm currently being audited by the IRS for making a movie about the Q Shaman for real. <laughs> Dude, these people are evil, man. Crazy. Kurt Green says, the 13 colonies, only 3% fought the British and formed our Constitution and the Second Amendment for the very reason of what we are going through now. What is your opinion of a possible civil war? Well, I opinion. When they're, when they're going after Elon, when they're going after Trump's properties and they're lying and trying to seize his properties and auction them off. I mean, this stuff's insane. Or it's speculated they would do that. Yeah, this is this this is this is getting hot fast. When with with this the, the the fraud lawsuit in New York where they're saying Trump's properties are not actually worth what they're worth, and he's they're gonna try and seize his property. I mean, this yeah. is getting nuts. They're arresting lawyers. But I will add, it wasn't three percent that fought in the uh, uh, American Revolution. I forgot we 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 read through this because that's a common talking point. There is something about three percent. But um, I think I forgot what it was. It was it was a lar- It was it was a huge percentage of fighting age males that were fighting. But one thirty percent of the population was for it. Well, that's that, that was, was actually a talking point. So that was I think it was who was that John Adams? There's a or I don't know. Someone had a famous letter where they said a third's for it, a third's against it, and a third doesn't care. Yeah. But that was actually a generality. It wasn't an actual like statement of fact. It was basically just him saying like, look. You know, you've got people who want it, people who don't, people yeah, who don't care. Yeah. But it was actually something like, I think, low 40s that were in favor. And then there was like mid 20s that were opposed. And then the rest just did not care. But uh, a lot of sentiment for it. All right. All right, everybody. If you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button? Subscribe to this channel. Share the show with your friends. We hope you will be, uh, you, you guys who haven't already got your tickets for tomorrow's event. Get them now at TimCast.com. The Miami event is going to be absolutely amazing. We're going to see you tomorrow. We're super excited. You can follow the show at Timcast IRL. You can follow me personally at Timcast. The, the uncensored show will be up in just a couple minutes. So make sure you click join us. Michael, do you want to shout anything anything else out? We are stoked to support you. Excited about tomorrow. It's going to be an epic event. You can find out more about Public Square at publicsq.com. So you can shop with companies that do not hate you. And I'm really glad to be here. One of the most effective and powerful uh, uh, tactics and, and strategies we've had in the culture war is these boycotts and boycotts. And a lot of people are always saying like, it's really hard to figure out what to buy or not. You go to the grocery store, public square launches. And it's like, here's a list of things you can buy to replace all your garbage products with companies that actually agree with you. And then you're taking money away from the bad people and giving it to good people. Mr. Brushewitz. I want to shout out Mike Lindell for being a patriot. Let's go. And I want you to go to mypillow.com slash Poso. <laughs> Just support, give Jack money too. <laughs> support Jack Posobiec, a great patriot, and Mike Lindell. God are, bless you. Are you on Twitter? I am. Where can people find you on Twitter? At Alex Bruzewitz or at Bill Mitchell's Twitter account. He tweets at me every other day. So, so they'll find it. It's easier. So Mitchell's easier to spell than Bruzewitz. It's true. You yeah, guys true. have a great relationship, I hear. <laughs> um, but, uh, Don't call him an aging lesbian. Well, you know, you guys are, you know, whatever. He thank you guys have, so much for coming on. Yeah, thank you guys I, so I much for coming on. I think it was inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> this was a lot of fun. Uh, my health store is wearechange.shop. I'm on Public Square. I have products made, sourced, and manufactured in America. They help me. They might help you. Wearechange.shop. And uh, check out my podcast with Clint Russell. We had three huge episodes on rumble.com forward slash wearechange. We're going to be doing more of them here in Miami. Rumble.com forward slash wearechange. Thank you so much for having me. Serge? Yo. Uh, yeah, I'm excited for this after show. Excited for tomorrow. Uh, let's just get to it. We are going to be heading over to TimCast.com right now. So become a member, sign up, join the Discord, and we will take your questions starting in just a couple minutes. We'll see you all there.